on Anzac Day. We're at Belrive Oval for the clash between Clarence, last year's premiers, and the new team in the competition, the Southern Cats. Of course, as part of our program, we'll keep you up to date with scores right around Tasmania and in the AFL. At half time, we will announce the winner of last week's competition and give you this week's question. But also, we'll have an interview with Troy Clark, the coach of the new side, and we'll profile players in Shane Stevenson and Gavin Cooney. But let's take this opportunity first of all to look at the TFL ladder to see the positions of the respective teams as we come into this game. And the ladder will show that North Launceston are on top with eight points, followed by Clarence and Burnie also on eight, and Devonport, North Hobart on four, and the other sides have yet to open their account. As well as those scores that we have, we will keep you, as I said, in touch with all the other games going on this afternoon. Well, belatedly, because you've been in shot for a while, it's a, a good afternoon. The viewers have seen you for some time, but good afternoon, fellas. And I'm looking forward to this game as always, but particularly because it's a new side, the Southern Cats. That's right. It's our first chance to have a look at the Southern Cats uh, and to see whether they live up to high hopes pre-seasons. Chris, they, uh, well, they, they did reasonably well yeah. and included a win over Clarence. Yes. So they, they would come to the game with... Uh, um, a bit of confidence, but equally, Clarence will come to the game with a bit of ammunition out of that loss. Yes, and look, and the districts have been really disappointing since that pre-season cup. I mean, two zip at the moment and three zip, but they lose today. It's really unacceptable. Yeah, for a new club, it's important you get some wins uh, on the board very early in the year. Uh, for membership, for confidence, for all those things. You've gone through the pain of a, a loss of a club and the rebirth yep. of a new one, or the birth of a new one, so you want a little bit of a reward for effort. Absolutely, and the last thing Clarence won, I suppose, is a loss, because next week they've got Bernie, and they just would just be a hiccup for the way they go about the thing. Yeah, and that, well, that's going to be a, a cracker game next week, and they'll want to go into that full of yep. uh, full of confidence. Bernie will certainly test them up there. They're uh, the real enemy oh, yeah. of late, and yeah. uh, we're looking forward to that. But first, we'll get through this game on screen there. We'll see... Uh, well, it's one of the questions you've got to ask is whether Clarence will be as good as they were last year. But look, I've, been, I've been amazed about how, look, they've lost 10 players from last year's grand final side, plus Reed's out today, and it looks like a seamless transition for, for a new club. I mean, this is quite amazing. But O'Dwyer, McCallum and Cullen in the back line, all good players. Cole's been terrific. Davey's been a very good player. Been very impressed with Alan from Footscray. Colgate's been a real addition up forward. And Holm and Alex Alexander's back today, and he's just a magical player. They're probably on ball lines not quite as good, but Cooney's still an excellent, excellent contributor. Yeah, they uh, they don't seem to have lost a whole lot, and that's that's without Nuna and so on. But uh, uh, Sandy, uh, sorry, made the made the <laughs> crucial error. And I was determined not to make that today. Southern Districts on screen there. They uh, their strength is in their running department. Yep. Stevenson, Clark, Holdsworth, Prother is probably as good a four on ballers as any competition as any side in the competition has running around. The question is whether they'll be able to kick enough goals or whether they have enough. Uh, big man strength. Joyce has come in at the last moment because Gail has been unable to play today. They rely a lot on McGregor uh, to kick, kick a winning score. Routley's outstanding yep. in the air. Uh, I hope he kicks it a little bit straighter than he has in the past, but he's, uh, he's worth the money to, uh, to come and watch the game just by himself. Your tip, Andy? I'll go with Clarence. And Chris Smith, I know you'll do something controversial. If, if Matty Routley fires, the Southern Districts will win their first match. Big statement, Chris Smythe. Well, where we're sitting, conditions look absolutely perfect for football. What's it like down on the boundary, Gary? Yeah, John, well, down here it is. Uh, as you said, it's absolutely perfect down here. The ground's in terrific condition. I'm a little bit concerned about the centre, and I went out and had a look at it, gentlemen, and uh, my uh, my uh, theory on that is that the cooch grass that they use uh, during the cricket season does die off uh, during the football season. So any concerned viewers uh, there, that's my... Uh, theory on the on the grass but uh, the uh, the not a not a breath of wind down here um, probably uh, if anything um, it might we might get a little bit of rain later on uh, just a couple of little patches occasionally they tell me it's pouring down up there in Launceston at the moment so hopefully guys the next couple of hours or probably doesn't worry you guys up there too much but for me and the, the boys down here hopefully we can uh, hold hold the rain off but I'm going for a uh, Clarence win as you know they've been uh, my picks most weeks and if not every week but uh, should uh, looking forward to a terrific game. We went into the uh, uh, Southern Districts rooms before the game. Uh, they're really pumped up. They've got some terrific players in there. Some uh, they, they look as fit as fit as, as can be. And uh, I'm looking forward to a terrific game, guys. Gary, you know very well we'll be worried about you if it rains. And while we're here warm, our thoughts will be on you. But it's all right. The Weather Bureau have said no rain till 5 o'clock. I'm going to extend you this week, Bakes. Clarence, you said we'll win. What's your margin? 
Well, I, I, I don't think it'll be by a heck of a lot. I think, uh, you know, maybe for, you know, 24 points to uh, 30 points, maybe, I think uh, their strength in the oh, end will uh, I'll, I'll just, uh, you know, uh, string it out in the end. I think it'll be a tough game till half time. And I just think the strength of Clarence and their goal kicking with uh, Alexander and, uh, and uh, young Scotty, uh, the new boy from Footscray, I think. They'll, their, uh, their on-ball and their forward power will be too strong for the uh, Southern District side. But really it is, Gary, crunch time though for the Southern Districts. They're the new boys on the block, they have a lot of goodwill going for them, but they've got to get some points on the scoreboard because if they don't win today, three losses, and they're going to be battling for the rest of the season, possibly. Well, exactly, and uh, and I still do think, like, they could cause an upset. I know that there's a lot of uh, Southern District supporters that uh, are predicting, as, as well as other supporters, predicting an upset, but I just can't see it happening. I think, uh, you know, man for man for man, all around the ground, I think uh, Clarence Football Club, even though they've lost 10 players from last year's side, they've uh, they just managed to pick up uh, those good players all the time to take their spot, and, uh, you know, their reserves the last couple of years have uh, been either grand finals or in the top three, so They've had a lot of players that have just been hanging in, like Jared Reid has uh, the last couple of years, just ready to take the spot of these senior players that uh, are missing this year. Thanks, Bakes. Well, look after yourself in the rain out there if it comes. Ben, other players have broken up. Yeah, one of the sidelights we should be looking forward to uh, today, Chris, is of course the uh, Paul Holdsworth in a Southern Districts Guernsey, a long-time Clarence player, one of their best players. I thought he's probably just about their best player in the grand final win last year and has always played very, very well in big games. And this is a, it's certainly a big game for him. Right? Invariably, players who can switch from one club to another play well against their old club. And also, of course, Simon Cannon, Cannon number 35, yes. is uh, making his debut for Southern Districts, just as he would like against uh, his old club. On screen, Mark Colgrove. Mark Colgrove, yes, who's manned up against Jeremy Higgins, who's been the best players for the Bay the last couple of weeks. Yeah, played very well. Uh, Ex-North Hobart? Ex-North Hobart, good half-back flanker, half-forward flanker. Now, because of uh, Southern District's lack of height, forced to play in a key position, and apparently he was very, very good last week. Routley's in the ruck against Brereton. Brereton first hands, Cooney, through some heavy traffic to half-forward. Big fly came from Alexander, roving in his Cullen. Could be a perfect start for the Roos. They're all class and they play well. Yeah, win the centre, win the game. Win the centre, win the game. And they were just very smooth out of the middle there, very aggressive with the first bounce. Interesting to see uh, Southern District start with Matty Ratley, named in the forward pocket. He certainly can jump high. There's a bit of a, an even contest at the ball up, but, uh, but when it came to ground, Gavin Cooney, as he did so often, very quick off hands. Cullen is just a wonderful finisher. One thing, if John Cullen does one thing very well, is kick goals. Just the start that Sandy... Uh, it's, oh, I've uh, done it again. You've said it again. It's the Southern to, Cat team. Impose a, a, a fine, but it's going to be Clarence again. Hurry kick has taken a look like Allen, the player who's performed so well for them towards the boundary line, and the defender there receives a bit of a shove in the back, Jeremy Higgins, and the ball had gone over the line. The central umpire not the least bit interested. There he is, number 39, Jeremy Higgins. So Clarence... In attack again, Probert tries to play Ruckman. There's that man, the danger man, Alan Hill, but he didn't have the ball. The umpire saw it. Why not? Because it was there, and Scott Allen threw out the hands to make sure that the umpire saw what was going on. The man who impressed us in his first game here, and we saw Clarence play Glenorchy. You'd have to back him from here. Oh, well, you certainly he's a very, would. Very good finisher. I think he's. Uh reports I have on him so far that he's played in little bits of fits and bursts but when he has played very well he's been very very effective well he certainly is within kicking distance swings it round beautifully and we say again Andy just the start that Clarence wanted but not the Southern Districts two goals to Clarence Southern Districts haven't been past the centre no two goals in two minutes that's just what the Southern Cats didn't want but that was a lovely relaxed kick Stevenson's there, so to a Satori. Probert couldn't quite pick it up. The ball's just fumbling Southern District's way. Big pack of players. Kick smothered. Clark's in there. Again, very scrambly. The umpire might decide to take possession. He does. A bit ugly, you know? A bit ugly, oh. and it's even a bit more ugly. And there'll be a free as a result of that. Free against Craig Mackey, who probably let one go when uh, 
when he should have done, I think he's about to be recorded as well. And just a bit of lack of discipline, mate. There's a very fine line for being um, aroused and pumped for the game and being a bit over the top. And I think that's a, that's a case of that. I don't think there was a, didn't seem to be a whole lot of effect in the in the incident, but the umpire saw enough in it to. Umpire Sharinga reporting. Umpire Sharinga, Matthew Jones gets the free kick, and also will have a visit to the tribunal sometime this week. And that's important for the Southern District. They know it's going to be hard. Clarence are a very, very good side at home. They've been a very, very good side for a long time. They can't give away anything without a contest. Jones finds O'Dwyer. Just outside 50. Call to play on. Good smother from Mackey. Ball's inside 50. Cole with plenty of space. Over the top finds Davey. Looking for O'Dwyer. On to centre wing. Probert's got four to beat. Should fall to Routley. Was Benchy picks up by Holdsworth. Back into centre field. Harris. A high kick. Stevenson working hard. Couldn't bring the ball down. Who's first to recover? Shane Stevenson. Had it and then dropped it. Jones. Good tackle. Could be holding the ball. The umpire didn't think so. And he'll bounce again. And they've settled a little bit the Southern Cats. Is Billy Dunn on screen? Great uh, long-time football personality in Tasmania. Ruckman nullify each other. Hurry, kick off the ground. Might be effective. It's going to be effective now. McGregor grabs hold of the Cats, but unfortunately for him and his side, the first score for the Southern Cats from the boot of Jock McGregor will be a minor one, and Jock ruefully shakes the head, practices, and said, wish he, I had another chance. He Andy. did everything right. He, everything, he did the hard bit, got Cole under the ball, and then Jock is very clever. He's, we know he's kicked some miraculous goals over time, and he probably tried to do that a little bit more cleverly than, than was needed. Tried to kick it on the outside of his right foot, and he really could have just dribbled it through, through after he uh, disposed of Cole so effectively. Yes, he certainly did all the hard work, but unfortunately, only behind Cole. Decides to go as he usually does, straight down the centre of the ground. Chance for the player behind in Allen. Jones took it from him, gave a hand pass back to Allen. He's caught and well and truly tackled by Giles. Ball comes out to O'Dwyer. Kick well, ricochets off his own man. Hand pass was well, was almost effective. Well, that hand pass came from Michael Graves, but a whistle on play, a free kick will go the way of the ruse and will be taken by Jeremy Smith. Smith drives the ruse. Probert from behind. Oh, but a good mark indeed. Nah, Drifting across free. the pack was Walter Holm. Holm. Nah, free no, to Sandy free Bailey kick. Call back. Thanks, Andy. Well, you push picked underneath it. the pack. And 50. Not only a great coach, but a top umpire. Should have been an umpire. Should have been an umpire. Couldn't play. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely. Jeremy Higgins gets the free, and he did. He put himself in front, put himself in the right position, and got a free as a result of that. And with the 50 metre, it's just too far out to score. McGregor's on a lead. Chopped off. Just a little obvious. Miller is filling up the gap. Switches play. The kick had to be effective. Hole a long way down from half forward on Stevenson. The umpire said we'll throw it in. One of the problems Southern Cats will have is, is that they aren't very unilateral, if you like, in the forward line. Jock McGregor is their target just about every time, and that makes it very easy for Clarence to defend. Hole rows the pack. Brereton bursts his way through Black. Clever to McCallum. Thumping kick. Colgrave one on one. Good work. Terrific stuff with Scott Webster. Quickly on the plate. To Higgins. To centre wing. Probert's there. Needs a favourable bounce. It was Mackey, in fact. Clever use of the hands. Just went through Satori. Graves in trouble. Took too long. It was a good handball. The receiver just wasn't ready for it. The receiver wasn't up to the, the quickness of the handball. Jones has been busy early. Four free kicks to Clarence, one to Southern Districts. Cold life. Clever. No, I pushed him out. No. I agree. I was, <laughs> not no umpire. No, that was the right. Uh, I was waiting for you to life. pick that one. Hand pass. The kick taken quickly. Roving the cut. The pack well was Clark, has time to take a bounce, goes towards half forward, wants to go inboard, goes inboard with the hand pass from Story, comes back to Clark again. The kick, well, the runners are wanted now. McCullum leading in the race for the ball, defensively off the ground, and that's very effective. Doesn't even give away a score. And from the boot of Scott McCallum, the ball over the boundary line. 
And, of course, Troy Clark, who carried the ball so much in that passage, the play is the other key player that Clarence will have to be concerned about. And I guess along with that will be Shane Stevenson. It'll be interesting to see. I think Kia Wilson on screen there has Shane Stevenson. Dwyer thumps the ball away, goes to Burberry, comes around his left foot, steady, shoots towards goal. And I think James Burberry has put the first goal on the board for the Cats. He has. Well done, young man. And that's exactly what the Cats needed very quickly, Andy. Oh, lovely piece of skill. There's then a little bit of confidence now from the bench, uh, the Southern District's bench. Or, uh, I'd be sitting there hoping we get, we've got to get one on screen. Burberry has a look to centre the ball as he should have done. Nothing on offer. Had enough confidence to back himself on the left foot. A lovely piece of skill. And Southern Cats are back in it. Good chip from, from McVilly. Excellent. Troy Clark has emphasised in, uh, in the press this week the importance of protecting the ball carry. He'll be very happy with that. Routley against Brereton. Clark. Mackey. Spins clear. Southern Districts with the run of the play. Held up by Miller. Beautiful intercept. Harris should score. Should kick a goal. Terrific yeah. stuff. And confidence. Confidence will be way up now for the Southern Cats. They are looking down the barrel to their credit. They, uh, they had two goals against them in the first couple of minutes and they would have been wondering, oh, here we go again. But they bounced back with real conviction. And that was a wonderful bit of play by Harris. Intercepted the handball. They had a little knock on. Handball comes out. Harris, whoa, reads it well. Reads it better than the receiver. Runs on. Wasn't terrific off the boot, the kick. But it went straight and it went long enough. Goal. Well done. Nine and a half minutes, and Clarence by a point. And really, Jamie Harris, it was a classic steal. Routley has them going forward again. Mackey goes in vigorously, was taken too high, and so Craig Mackey will take the free kick, wants 50 metres. He's been okay yeah. since the report. Huh? Yeah, perhaps he needed to settle him down, Chris. <laughs> I like so the move of Routley into the ruck. Mackey goes. That's a good, aggressive move. Goes the hand pass. The long penetrating kick and a good mark will be paid. Yes, indeed. Higgins, Jeremy and so Higgins, Jeremy drifted, Higgins down. Yeah, drifted down the ground. Given the task of minding Probert today, Jeremy Higgins now an opportunity to put his side in front. He'll kick from outside the 50 metre. Just determining where the mark is. Relatively young man. Possessions at this stage of the game equal 16 aside. Now Jeremy Higgins taking a lot of time organising the mark. He wants to know exactly where it is because the man on the mark, Probert, has dropped back. The old ploy to then charge up to where the mark is. Higgins playing on the back line, but a chance now for a goal. It's a lovely kick. Distance is not a problem, nor is the accuracy. Three goals in a row for the Cats, and they're in front, Andy, and playing well. Oh, full, full of confidence. And why I'm emphasising confidence, it does take a lot of confidence for a defender like that to run off down into uh, down into attack, so deep into attack. Backed himself very early. Jeremy's always been good at that. Good runner, good kick. It's a very good one-out mark. And he finished well. So the Southern Cats have got their nose in front. Three goals in three minutes, John. Great performance by the Cats. Some of us perhaps thought Clarence would be too strong, but the Cats, no way. It'll be Brereton against Routley. This time slightly favours Brereton. First hand to it. Graves. Brereton chops off the handball. It's going the Ruse way. Black. Inside 50. Colgrave. One out. Falling to ground was Webster. Colgrave may make him pay. Not on this occasion. It's good pressure. Just enough pressure. See, pressure's accumulated. He just knew in the end that 29. Uh, sorry, Scott Webster. No, we've lost him on the screen. Shane Stevenson, Shane Stevenson just put enough pressure, Todd Stevenson, sorry, put enough pressure on Mark Colgrave, I'll get it right in a minute, enough, enough pressure on Colgrave to force the error. That's Todd Stevenson, indeed, to take the free kick. Routley, good mark, Matthew Routley, had some much needed height for the Cats, goes the hand pass, finds Graves, Mackey pushes it forward cleverly to Clark, and he's good enough and skilled enough to get the hand pass out from Mackey. Mackey to Shane Stevenson. Stevenson on that favoured left foot will look for McGregor. Puts it out in front of him beautifully. The big fella can't quite get there. Comes onto it now. Knocks the head cleverly. He's got one support. Harris, who kicked the goal two minutes ago, blazes away. But this time, unfortunately for him, Andy's side offline and only a behind. But I tell you what, Andy, 
the Cats have taken control of this game. They're well on top at the moment. They're full of run, full of conviction, prepared to leave their man to make extra numbers when uh, when their teammate wins the ball. Troy Clark's won a couple of uh, good possessions. Shane Stevenson's now had a couple of good possessions, and that's a good sign for the Cats. They need their best players playing well. Cole short to Davey. Outside 50. Routley keeps his feet. Thumps it back in. McGregor has got to beat three. Won't get there. Ooh. Made Miller pay. Quickly up. He's got O'Dwyer free. The attacking side of centre wing. Tunnel ball to Black. Needs to sit. Eventually does. On his non-preferred side. Inside 50, Alexander, the good tackle. Then dropped it. Stevenson's in there. That's Todd. Taps out wide, Black. Webster falls to ground. Still making the pressure on Colgrave. Clever handball to Black. Good goal. And they needed a clearance. Bit back hard. Was a very slick handball, as you called it. And a bit of good running from Campbell Black. You saw him win possession in the middle of the field. He kicked it in long. Uh, he was the one who, who mounted the attack inside 50, and he ran hard enough to get on the end of it another. Good tackle from, from Alexander. Ball knocked out towards the boundary as it needed to be. Good work from Black again. Enough pressure there. Good slick handball. As we said, Campbell Black, who had followed his kick from the centre of the field right deep, uh, very deep into the forward line, ends up kicking a goal. Good value for effort. There's a good hand pass from Mark Colgrove, playing game 100 today. 97 with Hobart, three with the Roos. Holdsworth over the ball, the very familiar Bill Revoval for him. Jones got the ball out, Black kicks it off the ground and gains quite a lot of territory. Chance now for Probert, snaps onto the ball towards goal. Knocked away by Webster, he'll try and go defensively, he can't. Colgrave, hands and knees, oh, then throws that, flicks it up, play on was the call. Allen had the ball taken away, the crowd not very impressed. David Giles said that had to be a throw. At long last, it'll be the Cats to get the kick. Might be the consolation for them. I think there might have been a fair argument about the throw. Yeah, oh, certainly, I think it controlled. Webster takes the free kick. Burton is there for the ruse, Probert rows it well. In front and taking the mark on the second attempt. Welcome back, Colin Alexander, playing his first game of the season for the Roos. And it's not bad when you can bring a player like Alexander back into an already strong side, Andy. Highly accomplished player, Colin Alexander. They'll play him. He had him probably his best season last year, I thought, John. Yep. And they played him a lot more on the ball. He played more around the middle of the field. Well, but I think they'll ease him back in a, in a more familiar position, playing out of a, the forward pocket as a bit of a crumbing goal-kicking specialist. I say we, talking about the state side, we would like a match hard and fit Colin Alexander. Maybe a possibility as he shoots for goal, and he has put it through. So once again, Clarence, as always, respond to the challenge and now extend their lead to eight points. We've got a bit of a shootout. This, this scoring rate keeps up. We're going to have a very high scoring match ahead of it. And as we said, Colin Alexander's kicked a lot of goals for Clarence over a long time. It's a bit of a good contest in the air. Tried to knock it on Sandy Bay, probe it, the crumbs, and the smart bit in there, the mark was not that difficult in the end. The second effort was good and the finish was good, but the good thing that Colin Alexander did was play in front, and often kicks that are, kicks that come into the forward line under pressure fall short and you must be in front. Routley wins the tap. The Cats go forward. Clark, under the hammer from McCallum. Holm, with strength, works it clear, only as far as Steele. Clever handball to Holdsworth. The Cats can set up to Tory on 50. McGregor's on the lead. Good punch from Cole. Sits again to Tory, decides to have a go himself. It's a good looking kick. Mackey! That was courage. That was just, that's a wonderful piece of courage. That's a wonderful example of just keeping your eyes on the ball. He's going to be on a very tight angle. He wants to play on. But Chris, before he scores, let me correct my dismal mathematics. I said uh, Clarence by eight points. It's four points, in fact. He goes backwards. McGregor was the target. Look away, handball. Cannon. Mackey's there as well. Good mark. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's all a set play. Well, that was one. That's all. <laughs> Andy was That's a, a hard wonderful. One. Wonderful piece of play from him in the end. Hard no, the, way to go about improving the angle. I was going to say, there were, he had a fair chance of kicking it from where he is. I know the angle was very tight. He only had to move around a little bit. He was so close. He had a very high margin for area when he had the first kick. But it's paid dividends in the end. He's had a few touches at centre-half forward. The distance won't trouble him. He's drilled it. Knew what he was doing all along, never in doubt. They practiced that down at the Southern Districts. 
But it was a good bit of play from McGregor. Second effort. Jock uh, made a bit of a spade, a spade for himself. Only just inside 50. Slipped a handball out. Good quick kick into the forward line from, hit, from Cannon and Mackey in front again. That's two terrific marks, two courageous marks in the space of a minute. And so I will say with a great emphasis, the Southern District's in front by two, repeat, two points. We're just over 18 minutes into an action-packed first quarter. Great footy here at Bell Reeve. Tap down, but unfortunately Holdsworth couldn't get the kick. Cooney swoops upon the ball for the ruse, goes forward. No one in the goal square at all. Ball bounces, it's on its own. And then eventually Cannon is more than happy to concede a behind to the ruse. And well, he's, he's done a bit early, Simon Cannon. Yes. He'd be very keen to get himself involved in the game. He'd be emotionally high for the game playing against his old side players. Certainly would. Kick in taken. The lead is on. And it finds McVilly. McVilly. There's the pass. Not all that effective. Looking for Mackey. And why wouldn't you? Because young Craig Mackey has been doing it very well. In the clearance hierarchy. Well, they're not worried, but they know that they have a battle on their hands and that's what we like to see Chris and they've put Holm back onto Mackey and now Adwire's going there so they're making the rules think Cooney Brereton Smith just tied up I think it's going to be important for Southern Districts to make the rules respond to them Andy rather than the other way around oh yes yeah they and well Clarence actually they, I think you're right Clarence like to play their own game it's not many times you see them tag today or like the only tag I can pick up at the moment is Keir Wilson running with Shane Stevenson at half forward for Clarence start again Brereton and Routley just testing each other out a little bit and Matty Routley just looks to me eh? his body language says he's enjoying this chance to run and jump at the ball as a ruckman They've headed the hit out, six to four. Home. Wild handball. Giles was clever, but eventually falls to ground. The umpire spotted the free. It's going to Smith. Just the attacking side of centre wing. Jeremy Smith was impressive against Gnorky two weeks ago. Goes inside 50. Probert's there. So too is Higgins. At ground level is Jones. Boundary's too close. He looks good, Jeremy Higgins. He's been out of uh, uh, TFL football for a couple of years. He's on the move to Southern Cats. They've lured him on their move down to the to the Kingston area. He just looks off, like a good picker. Just off the ball, free kick to Cooney. Thumps it long, Colgrave. Good position. Did enough to take a wonderful mark. Just pushed, just eased Higgins out of it. Caught him under the ball. Good use of the body. It was Webster, in fact. Webster, yeah. Webster was caught betwixt and between. He probably couldn't do a lot more than more than he did to try and spoil. He just had to jump up and try and distract Colgrave, and Colgrave's finished truly. Kick six last week. Yeah. He's impressive up there. Yeah, he looks good, Dave. And it's, it's one of those things with Clarence Haven. The one area I, I think they've probably missed in the last few years when they were so terrifically strong on ball with Noonan and Holdsworth and Kate is they haven't had a real key goal kicker. Now, they, they picked, they've lost a little bit on the ball, but they picked up this guy, Mark Colgrove, who we see eyes on the ball, Edge Webster under it, kicks truly, and maybe what they've lost on the swings they picked up in the roundabout. So Clarence now back in the lead by five points and a little bit of rain starting to fall here at Bell Reeve. Not too much at the moment. We hope it stay, stays away because this is a great game of footy. Routley again gets a tap. Jones to tidy up for Clarence. Kick not particularly effective. Giles thumps it forward and does it well to Graves. He goes to ground. He's looking for support. Not too much offering at the moment. Whistle on play behind play. I think Graves was dealt with after he got rid of the ball. He was. And so Michael Graves takes the free kick. Goes out to the centre and does it well and finds Jamie Harris. Harris, there's not much of him in size for a determined footballer. Two against one. Steele. Well, it comes to Cannon, if he can pick it up, he does eventually, thought of the hand pass. Now he goes the kick, blazes away, and a good mark taken under pressure by Nick Davey, despite the harassment from Burberry. Davey wants to play on, gives it to Cole. He transfers play, and the kick is good to Connor. No, didn't hold it, says the umpire. Ball pushed forward towards the boundary line, and Craig Miller can't keep it in. But I'm impressed, Andy, by the determination and effort of the Southern Cats. You wouldn't expect anything less, but they're doing it well. No, well, their backs to the wall. You know, they know that they could go three zip down if they don't win this game. And if then they fancy themselves as being a finalist in the first year, so they've got to win against the big boys. 
Hodgeworth in ruck, falls to Graves. Nice little handball, ends up with Clark, just on 50, normally good disposal of the ball. And finds Burberry. Troy Clark looks in good form, and uh, that, as we said before, that's very important for, for uh, the Southern Districts. One thing that Troy Clark does very well, he'll collect a number of possessions in a row. In a row. He, he'll kick the ball, follow the ball, get it again, kick the ball, follow the ball, get it again. Burberry will kick from just inside 50. Snipe off the boot, won't have the distance, at the back was cold. McGregor just gave him a little shelf and gave away 50. It's the sort of thing the Southern District suggests that they've got to take out of their game. I think they're probably relatively in talent. They're probably just a little bit behind. Clarence, not that far behind, but they've certainly got to eliminate any lack of contest. The ball will come back to Cole because of time on was uh, was blown and, uh, and the umpire hadn't signalled start of play again. But they've got to cut all those little things out of their game, Southern Districts, if they're to remain competitive. They don't want to get, be giving away possessions or yardage too easily. David Donato on the bench. Yet to come back for Clarence. Miller, a handball from Cole. Little chips good to Brereton. Out wide is Smith. Inside 50 is Alexander, but in the best position is always going to be Webster. Little give to Harris. Some of the cats need to clear. Stevenson, good mark. First touch for Stevenson. Webster. Stevenson with pace. The Cats are set up. Giles on the end of the handball. In support. Burberry. McGregor's on the lead. Too tall. At the back is Mackey. It's bouncing. O'Dwyer. Cole. They all, the sound of the fence was Jock McGregor. Ends up with Smith and he clears. Not for long though because the mark taken by Shane Stevenson who's certainly coming into the game. Slow to start off with Shane Stevenson and player there. That's significant, that's Key Wilson, that's yeah. uh, Shane Stevenson's tagger. Yep. And since he's been off the field, Shane Stevenson's had uh, three possessions. So that's why he's come into the game. So Stevenson tries to go to the torpedo and he gets on to an unloads, a beauty in terms of distance, but the accuracy, not what was wanted and threw for only one behind. And he's going to really, Keir Wilson really has built a bit of a reputation the last few years as a very run with, a very good run with player. He's able to get a number of possessions while keeping good players uh, relatively short of possessions. Cole goes short, Jones drops what he should have taken but recovers in time to kick and kick well. Probe it, onto the bouncing ball, has time to get round to his favourite left foot and blaze away. He does and blaze away is the right description because it's offline and through for a behind to the ruse. Five point margin. Ken Steele just looking for some options. Decides to go out wide. Good leap from Harris. He's been very, uh, very busy. He's been very impressive. Finds Cannon at half back. On the centre wing. Ball just sat. But sitting with it was Holdsworth. There's a big smile counter running around him. The centre wing, the attacking side. The Cats moving the ball well. Satori spotted Stevenson. Can kick the ball a long way inside 50. He's a natural left footer. But this time he just pulled it to the right. And this will give us an opportunity to go down to Gary Baker for an injury report. Bakes? Yeah, John. Well, look, Keir Wilson, he uh, seems to have copped a corky in his in his uh, upper leg, in his thigh muscle. And uh, I think he's just going to have a spell at the moment. He'll probably get a bit of hot stuff rubbed into it. And he should be back on uh, as soon as he's right. But enjoying a terrific game here, gentlemen. We certainly are. And thanks, Gary. Scott Allen takes it for the ruse down to the centre, drawing towards the close of the first corner. But Allen has used the ball well to Alexander. He wants to go to hand pass. Allen will get it eventually. He does so from Pro, but he kept running, the big fellow. Oh, and that deserved better without any prejudice on my part. It's all. Would have loved to have seen a goal then, Andy. It deserved one. Well, he probably should have kicked the goal in the end. I'll be a bit harder than that. <laughs> of course all, you will. You're a coach. All the work's been done. He, he really did run well. But both sides are very determined to run it. You know, this is a bit of a, like as I said before, it's, it's probably as open and as running a game as we've seen for for all for a couple of years. Steel forced to hurry on. Kick drops a little short in the end. Probe it. 
The umpire wasn't going to pay it, but Probert hung on to it and said, I'll have it. <laughs> Jones thought he had a bit of it. The centre wing. Mackie's a target. At ground level, Clarence had the numbers through black. He goes short to Matthew Jones. Hard against the boundary line. Alexander's up forward. Brereton's there as well. He goes long in the probate direction. At the back is probate. Holm was there. Higgins looks for the boundary line. Alexander doesn't let him. Squares it up. He's looking for Colgrave. The kick was a little long. Webster thumps it out. Allen. Back to goal. Stevenson. Allen was clever. Nice little chip. Was looking for Cooney. Brereton went without the ball. So too did Routley. Holm. Good tackle. Bit of courage required in there, John. It certainly was, and both sides displaying plenty of that, Andy. Yeah, we've got some good, honest 50 50 contests in that little round. Uh, I think Walter Holm considers himself unlucky. He got a knock round the head, but not seen by the umpire. Bounce. Brereton tries to steal it. Hurry, well, almost a hand pass out, squeezed it out by Schultz, who's on the ground. And free kick. Yes, it has. It'll go the way of the ruse. And it looks like it will be taken by Craig Schultz. Yep. And he will kick from... Well, he'll kick from 46-47. David Giles on the mark, directing traffic, telling his teammates to pick up the loose players. Very close to the end of the first quarter, so a goal here is particularly handy. And Craig Schultz might find it a bit difficult. Doesn't get the distance. Colgrave in front. Oh, almost unopposed. Mark Colgrave and Schultz couldn't kick it from there, but I'll tell you what, Colgrave will as the siren sounds, so important psychological goal right on the siren. There's nothing worse than that Andy is there for a coach and no, a side. No, well, if you kick one, if you sneak one just before half-time, inevitably go, on up in, uh, go in, in a, with a, a psychological high. Goal up, I had to work, but well, he's going to come back and put up both hands, so Mark Colgrave kicks his second goal after the siren and at quarter time it's a nine point lead to Clarence and Andy what I think has been a very entertaining first quarter. It's been a very good game, good as we said during the call, a very open running game. Uh, Southern Districts realise that's their best chance when Clark, when Stevenson, when Holdsworth hasn't been in a lot but Harris has been very good when they get a lot of the ball. Uh, they look like scoring. They still may be a little bit undermanned down in attack. And Paul Holdsworth on screen there. He's had a good battle royal with uh, with Campbell Black, who ran very hard on one occasion, hard in the forward line to kick a goal. Clarence, they were assembled there at quarter time. Got away to a terrific start. Uh, Sandy Bar Oh, we've done it again. Southern Cats bit back hard and got their nose in front. But uh, as you said at the end, that last, that, that last goal was a bit of a psychological blow against the Southern Cats. It's amazing the number of goals that kick the last five minutes of play in any quarter. It is. Yeah. It's when concentration uh, lapses and when tiredness kicks in and uh, that's when the opposition can sneak a goal if you're not right at your top. And so at quarter time here at Bell Reeve, it's Clarence, last year's premiers. They lead the Southern Cats by nine points and we'll now take the opportunity to check other footy scores around the state and in the AFL. Not much football happening in the AFL. There's only one game on in progress at the moment. And Hawthorne are playing the Brisbane Lions at AFL Park. And the Hawks have started off well. The other game this afternoon, the big one between Essendon and Collingwood, a twilight game, gets underway at 20 to 4. In the NTFL, there is no SFL football today. Those games have been played tomorrow. The NTFL underway. La Trobe have started well. And certainly East Devonport handing out at this stage a football lesson to South Burnie and South Launceston doing very well in this competition. They're already taking it right up to Wynyard and putting pressure on them and have established a comfortable lead. Penguin got annihilated last week, but they've started well against Smithton and Launceston and Deloraine, well, the barest possible margin between those two sides. And at North Hobart today in the VSFL, the Mariners were playing a Gippsland Power and from a parochial biased point of view, I have to say, unfortunately, the Gippsland Power too good for the Mariners and so the Mariners are going down to the Power. And Bill Reeve, just repeating, at quarter time, it is Clarence by nine points in what I described and Andy agreed as an interesting first quarter good football and as we have a look at the details of the game we'll see I would think that there's not been a lot between these two sides 
In terms of goal kickers, well, the man who has more than one is Mark Colgrave. He's kicked two. Uh, the rest for Clarence and the rest for Southern Districts are all single goal kickers. Statistically, before we see any figures, Andy, uh, tell, look, us, tell us about... Yeah, sorry, Chris, go on. Just look at the, uh, the top left-hand side of the screen. You've got... Um, uh, Mr. Rewalt, Chris Rewalt, who was the uh, playing now, I think he's 47 years old. <laughs> and he played in the reserves, coached the reserves of Clarence. And next to him is John Thurley, who used to coach North Hobart and Hobart. So Clarence have sort of pulled some old brains trust back to help them. And the statistics, I would say, uh, John, to get back to the main game, <laughs> the, the statistics, I would guess, are being very even because it is an o very open, e an even, open running contest. Uh, kicks 36 to 40, Clarence marginally in front marks marginally southern district there haven't been many high marks at all taken it's all out in the open chip it around sort of mark handballs marginally southern districts way and i think that will that's likely to happen for the rest of the game southern districts will rely on that running the ball freeze marginally clarence's way hit outs eight to five maddie rattley's enjoyed being in the ruck and has got his hand on the ball uh, first more times than has jeremy Brereton. It's, it's good he's come back too. He had a, a nasty re knee reconstruction yeah. last year. Yeah, and he's bulked up and he looks handy. I actually went down to the rooms beforehand to see what was happening down there and he was the, the, the Southern Districts player who was making most noise and most keen about it. And I really do, I've got to keep saying this, but he really does look like he loves being a ruckman. They've played him a lot out of the forward pocket and he does jump up and take a, a lot of good marks. He doesn't kick the ball real well, but he loves being on the ball. And to find out what the coaches had to say at the quarter time break, down to Gary Baker. Yeah, well, thanks, John. Well, uh, both uh, both coaches, Troy Clark, uh, the Southern Districts coach, he was uh, reasonably pleased with the way they're going, the, the way the boys are going in hard, the way they're the discipline, the uh, the uh, you know the skill, the the running. He's he's more than happy with the way they're going. Uh, Grant Fagan, on the other hand, not a happy man at all, but uh, he's uh, he says the boys can improve. But here we've got uh, Southern Districts president uh, Dennis Fuller. Welcome, Dennis. Thanks, thanks for having us, Mark. Yep. Now, now, listen, mate. Uh, the difference between uh, being president of a, uh, of a of a club like Kingston, ha where you have been for the last few years, to taking on a big job like uh, Southern Districts Football Club in the TFL, what's the difference in being president of the two clubs? Well, uh, uh, Kingston's been a good uh, yeah, grounding for me, sort of thing. I mean, it's, it's the same thing, only a, only a different levels. So, so basically, the intensity intensity's there. Yeah, not a problem. But uh, got to say hello to the boys at the Kingston RSL Club who are down there on Anzac Day too. Probably just a bit more travel too in the TFL, mate. But yeah. uh, your recruiting and your finance and all that—that's all come together uh, terrific for you. Seeing you're only been yeah. uh, four or five months in uh, in uh, your infancy there. Yeah, that's right. The, the, the rest point sponsorship and the major sponsorships go along well. But we've got to work on the, the minor sponsorships now. Not a problem, but we're, we're getting there. Terrific, Dennis. You're doing a terrific job. The boys are playing a terrific first quarter of football. Good luck, yep. not only for today, but uh, for the rest of the year. Good. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Gary. Clarence going to left of screen. First into attack, Graves stems the tide, only as far as Stevenson. Important little knock on in Mackey's direction. Smith's there, bursting through as McConnon. Falls to McVilly. He goes wide and finds Stevenson. He's been busy now since Wilson's been off. Inside 50, McGregor against Cole. Cole's done well. Yep, yep. McGregor had that one chance to kick the goal early on when he shifted Cole under the ball, but other than that, he hasn't really look terribly dangerous to this stage i think it's jeremy smith now that's kim excel on screen ex abc part-time abc commentator come glenorchy coach o'dwyer gets it working the ruse way smith o'dwyer's back in there i was going to say i think jeremy smith now that keir wilson's off the field i think jeremy smith has the job on shane stevenson it's a big ask. There's only three or four senior games for Jeremy yeah. Smith. Yeah, a lot of faith from the, the uh, coaching. Holdsworth tries to take it out of the ruck. Dwyer just tackles him. Graves throws him in. I think he's hit his head on the ground in the, in the end of that tackle. And no, that's the other thing. I know Clarence, inevitably, Clarence will be keen to get out of in any way they can. That's just the nature of it, the event when you move from one club to the other. Dwyer. Goes to centre square, Cannon left it, but Brereton took it in front of Routley, in the centre of Bell Reeve. He goes a little wide, Cole goes on the lead, spills to Allen. He looked nonchalant as he plucked it out of mid-air, but then was swamped. It's got Allen, a very 
effective recruit. Former Western Bulldogs player. And a good pick-up by the Roos. That will nullify each other. Looks like Giles trying to come through the pack with the football there. No, it wasn't. It was Simon Cannon. He's got the free kick. Goes by hand. Has a teammate going past. A whistle on play. And that was Nick Probert. The kick will go the way of the catch. It'll go to Sean Satori. Uh, another whistle is gone. Stevenson will have to come back because before the kick was taken, for some reason, the umpire blown the whistle. There's something going on right back down the ground. I'm not sure with the... In fact, I the think line. it's going to go to the ruse. It it's is. There's something off the ball yeah. when, uh, when Nick Probert yep. was kicking the ball. It must be something in the Shepherd. Yeah, something happened. The umpire churning away there to Nick Probert. And... The free kick will be taken by Walter Holm. He goes out wide, and why not? Because he's got Jones on his own. Juggled the ball, Matthew Jones, but he's saying no to Craig Miller. I'm going to go along and bomb it right in. Kick number six coming up for Matthew Jones. Back this year from the SANFL. It's a wobbly old kick, but it might be effective. It is effective because in front of the pack, and that's where you get them, Andy. Justin Burton, the ball fell short. Yeah, unopposed. You're yeah, right, as we called it early in the game, that when uh, Colin Alexander took a mark in similar circumstances, but it really was pretty ordinary defence from Southern Districts yeah. not to have a big tall player back in front of them. That was that's the hole. That's the place the ball's most likely to go. You just need a big tall player to, to fill up that hole. The old expression, yes, you've got to fill up that hole and the cats didn't do it and they may suffer accordingly. We're at about 45 degree angle, well within kicking distance. I think the goal umpire is happy with that. He is himself, and so are his teammates. And so Clarence with the first goal on the board in the second quarter. And Justin Brereton would be keen to make his mark now that Jeremy Sharpen's moved uh, to New South Wales to play. He's been in and out of the side. He's been a bit of a, a bits part play. He's played centre half forward, centre half back, a little bit of ruck. And now he's going to play mainly in the ruck, but he also will prop up forward line, open the forward line as he did then, put himself in front, took the mark and kicked truly. Built himself up a little bit this, this year, uh, Justin Brereton, and looks uh, up to the task at the moment. And by Young, starts proceedings, Brereton goes again, McVilly gets a forward for the Southern Districts, and as far as McConnell, Hamble, looking for Miller, Mackey, blind Hamble, might fall to Harris, he's in trouble with Jones, then was held onto, no free kick, Troy Clark, Cooney, good tackle, didn't push him in the back. Falls to Schultz, gives it to Jones. Too tall, he's looking for home. Graves had it, then lost it. Jones follows again. Scrambly, inside 50 for the, for the Cats. McConnell pushes it out wide for O'Dwyer. Falling in hard was Holdsworth. Graves was thrown out of the pack, and he'll get the free. He just had the numbers, the Cats. Didn't let the ball out. McGregor on a lead. One on one against Cole. McGregor's in front. Cole from behind. Falls to Stevenson. He couldn't get his foot to it. Good tackle from Satori on Davey. Graves had it. Burberry, natural left footer. Finds Stevenson in some space. Nice little give to McGregor on his left. Goal. And they bit back again. Bitten back again. Southern Districts, like in the first quarter, they, Clarence got away, kicked the first goal. It's important they do that, uh, Southern Districts. They've got to keep, give themselves a chance by just hanging in, persevering. A lot of that, the goal in the end was well worked, but a lot of it came from just scrubby sort of work in and out of a pack. Some good handball in here. Draws a player, Shane Stevenson, slips a handball to Jock on his left foot, and he's a good finisher, Jock McGregor. And the Southern Districts fans come to life again, and why not? Clarence's lead reduced to 11 points. We thought we'd have a good game on our hands, and we have. Ruckman again really nullify each other. Ball comes to Probert, gets a hand pass, the ball thumped away defensively, which is effective football. Kick off the ground by Cullen for the Roos, but he can't keep the ball in play. And of course, it's absolutely vital, Andy. The Cats have to stay in touch. If Clarence get a run on, it's almost good night nurse the way they yeah, play Yeah, we know. The if, if you take the pressure off Clarence, they've been a good side for a very good time for a long time because they are very good finishers. They're highly skilled sides, so you've got to keep the pressure. Jones can't get the hand pass in. Probert tries to get it out. Eventually, it's Harris who gets the kick. The ball knocked forward by O'Dwyer, but a hand pass is effective because it finds Holdsworth. Holdsworth looking out wide for Burberry. He's got Davy on his hammer. Goes to the boundary line, gets it to Stevenson. He can go on the left foot. Kick is a floater. 
and Cole once again defensively. You have to admire Andy Cole, Andy Bennett, because uh, he's defending very well. Yeah, he's done a good Anthony job. Anthony Cole, I should say. The guy who's doing well is Burberry out of the out of the forward pocket. Uh, James Burberry against Nick Day, who's he's really a very accomplished defender nowadays. He's but he's won some important uh, possessions, James Burberry. And there he goes again. Vince he ends up with McCallum. Across his shoulder, Jones. Thumped away. Clark, good vision, finds Proven. In some space and time. Sets for sale. McGregor, one on one against Cole. Cole brings it to ground. McGregor falls over. Hurried snap. Looked like Todd Stevens, though. Couldn't pick it up. Oh, that's that's wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Terrific. The Stevens have been everywhere the last five or six minutes. <laughs> And here's an ex-Marin player, he's a very accomplished player, and the Southern District's fan in the stand there. A little bit of howdy do with young Todd Stevenson, younger brother of Shane Stevenson. One of the reasons Shane came back, I think, was to play with his, with his brother. And you would see it just on the edge of screen, you saw him running into play. McGregor made enough of a contest, just hung in there long enough. And, well, I don't know, it's just kick and hope, or whether you know where the goals are, it doesn't matter. It's six points, but that was a, a good bit of running, because he was on his own. I was actually going to call that he should have been, the ball should have been passed to him instead of kicked to McGregor, who was two against one. But Stevenson uh, was good enough to run to the pack, and that was a terrific snap in heavy traffic. Clarence by five points, eight and a half minutes into the quarter, two centre square, and fringe it'll go the way of the cat. I would assume it will be Routley to take the kick. It was a hand pass to Clark. Mark again going out wide, looking for and finding Paul Holdsworth. Holdsworth knows he should move the ball quickly. The lead is off it, and a good mark taken by Jeremy Higgins. Higgins, the rain falling, glory it over, not a lot. Certainly not affecting the marking. There's two of them, oh, good mark taken by Jones. Jughead Jones for the ruse going the wrong way. Stops now, told to play on. It's been short, the best player. Short pass is effective, finds Jones. Go no, find Smith, Jones and Smith. Smith alias Jones. Jeremy Smith. Oh, kicks it where Troy Clark is. For the home, I thought might have been a bit late. The umpire didn't think so, so a good spoil. Yes, he no, I think you're right. Yep, you're spot on, John. Right, right, good. I'd make a good umpire too, Andy. Oh, <laughs> it's easy from here, isn't it? <laughs> it certainly is. Troy Clark. He just gets around the ground. He's been in fits and starts so far today, but when he plays well, almost it, or inevitably something happens for the Southern Districts. Harris bounces up. It was mown down by Cooney. Alexander. He's got to get rid of it. No, he's pushed in the back. Cannon didn't think so. Alexander switches. Finds Jones. Little chip to Brereton. He was off. Giles took him high. And then he took Jones high. He's got his uh, book here. Ooh. And it's still going. Probert's in there. Well, this has got nothing to do with the game whatsoever. But I'd really be interested to know what the report There was a book out in there somewhere. I think it might be D. Giles in Brereton. In the end, the sad part about that for the Southern Cats is that, that Brereton was off. He'd taken the mark and was off. If it was a fair tackle, if you tackled him low enough around the hips, then he was going to ping him. He would have got a holding the ball decision and he's got 50 and he's going to get his second goal it's a decent 50 too <laughs> <laughs> he's made his point I think very strongly making the point and just off the ball a few other players are making some points as well Holmes in there Giles is leaving the ground Brereton lines up for his second he's got it and against the flow of play a little Clarence have bounced back. I don't know. We, we, I don't know whether we'll go far enough back in the replay to see what the uh, the free or the, the 50 metres was given for. And it's Which, on again. You know, it's on again. There was the 50. There was the the high tackle. It's just for the high tackle. But a book comes out here, and I, I'm not certain whether it was for the original tackle or whether it was for the for what happened afterwards. And back live inside 50. Allen's got it. Tempers are fairly frayed. He goes short. Alexander. Harris rows it. Cullen in hot pursuit. He switches wide to Stevenson. Good effort from Miller. Had two to beat. Still falls for Stevenson. Over the top finds Cannon. Has to sit and wait. And he's swamped. Too long. Inside the settles down and gets, gets their mind on the job. He's going to sneak a goal. Jeremy Smith has the ball. He's going to take the free kick. 
Yes, the Cats must settle down. They've got to keep the pressure on. Jones gets a hurry kick towards goal. It's a fantastic snap, but just getting there in time. At least to touch the ball and eventually see it go through for a behind was the Cats defender. But my word, that was nearly, nearly a brilliant goal from Matthew Jones. Right on the boundary. Kick in taken. Graves. Spoiler was there. Kick taken. Todd Stevenson it was. And Holdsworth not able to keep the ball in play. Prober just runs along and says, remember when you used to play on our side? Well, you're not on it today. He's been reminded most <laughs> times he goes near the ball at the moment as well. I think that's been the message fairly often. Yeah. Clarence lead by two goals as Schultz takes the kick. And a good mark going the wrong way taken by Aaron McVilly. McVilly. Macca, Macca is the call through our effects microphone. He goes long. Defenders there in numbers. Knocked forward by Burberry. Probert. I thought he may have been taken a bit high. What's the umpire's decision? Yes, he was. And Nick Probert will get the free kick. He's good umpire. He's going to let it go. If he yeah, had I think he was actually called by the umpire who, umpire who wasn't controlling play at the time. I, yep. I watched him. He looked up and saw with, waited to see whether the other umpire was going to play it and then stepped in. Well, that explains the delay because it seemed to me that Probert was taken too high, but there was some time. They well picked up Andy. Wasn't the umpire in control? Was the umpire further afield? So Nick Probert can make the difference a goal in favour of the Ruse if he kicks this. But it's a big ask. He's a long way out. He'll kick just virtually on the 50 metre line. Gets onto it. Coming back, but not coming back far enough. And only a behind. Happens a lot that when you're on the edge of your distance when you, and you know it, you just put that extra little bit of effort in and almost invariably you drag it across goal. The Roos by 11. Cole thumps it long. O'Dwyer. Cannon's at the back. Handball for, fell to Holdsworth. To Stevenson. Kick has to be effective. Mackie nearly a diving slips catch. Schultz has held it for a long, long time. And Harris will give it back to him. He switches play. Burton's there. Falls to ground. Good work from Mackie. Clark thumps it long. Cole's in best position. McGregor's there as well. Might sit for McGregor. All he's got to do is kick it. Well, is it I don't think touch? it was touch. It's the big question and... No. no. <laughs> it's a goal to Clark Holm, can't well, believe I it. I think Walter Holm believes it was. And Anthony Cole's going to join him whether he knows about it or not. But it makes no difference in the end at all. A goal to Troy Clark. The goal square was, that was the big effort the Mackie. One from Mackey to, to uh, no, it was Dermody, I think, belted it forward, knocked it forward, caught underneath the ball was McGregor, and I don't think anyone did touch it at all. I think actually Walter Holman there was complaining that he might have got a free kick because Jock ran over the top of him, but the umpire didn't agree, and the Cats are right back in, and they really are fighting hard, and he's enormously important to them, Troy Clark. Just, in the burst that he plays well, they look really dangerous. The ruse by five points, but Ooh. Billy Orr, teammate, cops the ball straight in the face, ricochets, and Alexander can kick it off the ground. So all of a sudden, through an accident, the ruse deep into attack. Webster is there, and I'm quite sure he will roll over the boundary line. He does. <laughs> what else would you do in that position, Andy? The try has been picked, he has. And if well, it was in rugby, that's called a double movement. <laughs> the try is not allowed. Well, Colgrave will get the free kick. We'll test his undoubted goal-kicking ability. Tight on the boundary line. Edge of the square. Miller can't get the second grab off the hands of the pack. Probe it. Might be first there. Won't be. It'll be Clark. The man just kicked the goal 30 seconds ago. Pushes it towards the boundary line. They'll say that's deliberate too. Jones is saying it. Bit of acting when he doesn't get the free kick. What else is a player supposed to do in that position, Andy? Well, yeah, I wouldn't expect any difference. But uh, Troy Clark did very well. Two against one to force a nil result. Routley's recovered from that kick in the face by the ball. Probe it. Just couldn't quite hang on to it. McConnon gets it going forward. McVilly. It's a very open forward line. Hole against Mackey. Back to goal. Cole came out in support. The groan was because McGregor wasn't with him. Holdsworth, Brereton, falls to Miller. Slips through Cooney. Clever work. Finds Holdsworth again. McConnell. And Holdsworth's done a bit in the last five minutes. He's been defined. He's only had a late start to the season, so maybe uh, 
he's uh, he's benefiting from a little bit of match practice now. Finds Black on centre wing. Colgrave, one on one against Webster. Had two touches and was held high. It was there. I don't think we could argue with that. Keir Wilson, which you've called it before, Keir Wilson's made a recovery. I think actually the knock he had was somewhere around the knee area, but he's back on the field. It'll be interesting to see where they give him the job on uh, Shane Stevenson. At the moment, it looks like he's going to drift back to a halfback flank and maybe pick up Nick Private. Cold a 14 to 9 clearance. Colgrove kicked two. Was pushed that wide. The rain starting to fall a little more heavily, Andy. Yeah, yeah, and it will make a difference in the end. So, what the both sides now, if they can, st one side can steal a break in the, while the weather and the ball is still reasonably fine, the ball's still reasonably light, that could be a winning break. So, it's time now to really put the, the head down. Free kick taken by Higgins. Clark, as always, active, kicks it off the ground. Doesn't gain a lot of territory, but finds the safety of the boundary line. And Troy Clark, certainly an old cliche, leading by example, knows no other way to play but flat out. And his players following suit. Comes to Kent Steele. Good defensive thump away by McConnell. Gains about 30 metres. Comes back, in fact, to Steele, the man who kicked it. Dermot, he throws himself on the ball. Well done, young fellow. Gets a hand pass out. Stevenson thumps it forward. Holds where it's gone too far for him. Might come to Harris. He's got it, looks for support, handballs in hope, Holdsworth, he can't get it, Burberry can, gets a hand pass out, but Probert has the ball taken from him, McConnell takes the kick for the ruse, and O'Dwyer leaning in for the ball, but was really nowhere near it, Alexander, he comes out with the ball, gets a hand pass out somehow, O'Dwyer spins round on the right foot, doesn't look for anyone, decides to go towards goal, but the cat's there in numbers and the mark is taken by Jeremy Higgins who moves the ball quickly, finds Clark, here he is, pepper and salt, certainly in everything. Kent Steele goes in board to Harris, now the cat's moving up, goes back to Steele, they're playing, keepings off. Now Steele goes the long penetrating kick and a good mark this time taken by McGregor in front where he should have been and Kent Steele kicked the ball to perfection. McGregor long way out, wants to dish it off, Steele who kept running, good play. He took one step over the mark that <laughs> the umpire gave him. The benefit of the doubt. And they so really do run the ball well. So they, they, they really have well. prepared to back themselves to run a long way from defence. They don't get nervous when the midfield think, oh, I better run back down yep. five my man. Kent Steele is going to have a shot at goal because he's done that. Yep, and he was one of the players who was important in that move. Goes the short pass, and it's Clark again. I have nothing but admiration for this man. Really he's going to go the short rate. pass. Enormously yeah, work great rate. work rate. McGregor has it again, and that's better when Jock McGregor leads, yep. and they put the ball to him, then Cole, who's been dominant, will find he's got a difficult job on his hands. Yeah, and it's a good patient build-up in the end from uh, yep. from the Southern District. When McGregor had the first kick, what, when he went 55 or 60 metres out, the temptation is to blaze away, and there's going to be always be a new result from that. So McGregor is within his kicking distance, gets on to it, but unfortunately for him and the side, offline and through for only at the home. And that did deserve a goal. That was a terrific build-up. Good patient, good skill, lots of good running, hard work. You just got to reward that effort. We've got a game on our hands. Certainly neither side's going to weaken. Well, you know, the, the, the feeling is you think sometimes Southern Districts may well may be beyond them, but they just keep fighting back. Kick found McCallum. Inside 50. Otwise there. Falls to ground. First in is Cullen. Clever little tap, beautifully read. Wonderful stuff by the districts. Eventually still falls to Miller. Good hands by Brereton. He's impressive in the air. Yep. He's a big lad. Yeah, he really has benefited from I think he's put a, a fair bit of time in the weights over the summer and he really is benefiting there. He looks like much more confident as he approaches the ball. Backing from here, Chris. He's kicked two. Yeah. He's kicked two this quarter. There's no reason to doubt him at the moment. Routley's on the mark. He's about 40 metres out. Just pushes it to the left. And that's one thing. I think Matthew Routley rucking is a relatively new, uh, new game to him. And picking up your opponent when they run deep into the forward line is one of the problems he's having at the moment. The Roos by five points. We've been playing almost 22 minutes. Kent Steele to take the kick in. Decides to go long. 
good tactics at this stage of the game. Off the hands of Odewire, gets a hand pass, then thump forward by Harris. He goes about 30 metres, and Stevenson's away with the football. Desperate effort to catch him by Smith was nearly successful. The Callum from behind can't get it. Holm can tidy up. Once Cole finds him by hand, and then Cole, that boom, if it's a floating kick, running underneath a Kieran Dewire. Second time he almost grabbed the ball, gets a hand pass out. Wilson, to Andy Minster, is back on the ground. He used the ball well and finds Probert. Good build up by the Ruse. Good supportive football on the back line and then work the ball forward. As we mentioned, Keir Wilson, who was off for a good part of the first quarter. Very creative footballer and found Stuart Probert. He's been fairly quiet today, Probert. But he is within kicking distance. As he lines up for goal. We'll test him. He slips slightly as he goes to kick the ball. Goes to the edge of the square. Todd Stevenson gets a hurry kick for the Cats. And finds the boundary line and gains about 48 metres. In fact, it's going to be technical, 49.3 metres. <gasps> and they sigh. The pressure's off for a moment. But only for a moment. I wouldn't mind that rug in the one. It's going to be cool. <laughs> well, don't, don't, tell Gary, don't tell Gary Baker that. It's lovely and warm in here. And the rain continues to come down, increasing now in intensity. But the football's been high in intensity all day. Hurry kick. Scrambled forward. Giles is back on the ground, grabs his opponent home too high. Home will take the free kick, a touch of deja vu about yeah, the I incident. Those two. <laughs> Bit of animosity there. The kick is good though, and it finds Jones. Matthew Jones, Cooney, and interfered with. Cullen won't be allowed. Cullen is allowed to play on. Blazes away, hooks it back. Well, no, he didn't. Not far enough through for a behind. Well, I thought players had stopped them, and the umpire ultimately said to Cullen, you can play on, and he did. You can see now a bit of mud. Sort of, uh, I hope it's not blood. <laughs> I think it's mud from the, uh, the ground. The ball noticeably isn't travelling as far at the moment, so the, the rain is beginning to have a bit of an effect. It was a clever kick from Cullen. Very yes. clever kick, and actually from our, our commentary <laughs> position, it looked like it did score a goal. It obviously curved back too late. Southern District bench doing a bit of homework. Gavin Joyce there in the, in the background. I think that's Mackie and Kim Exel controlling the board. Ken Steele. Districts have been under pressure the last four or five minutes. Clarence has got the zone defence. Goes out wide, finds Higgins. In game match territory. Kept possession. Long kick. Jones is in best position. Couldn't drag it down. Clark roves it nicely. Looks for Giles against Holm. Bounce is favourable. Burberry's there to lend assistance. Giles lost sight of the ball. Cole comes over the top. So too did Davey, and he'll get the free. They need, a, they need another tall one in at centre half forward, Southern Districts. Often when they run through the middle of the field, they are very they force most often to go wide. Miller. Kicks it long. O'Dwyer's there. In the sandwich. Allen. Clark again. Beautiful pick up from Matthew Jones. Hamble looks for Cooney. Across the body. Good finish. It's been pretty quiet today, Gavin Cooney. We haven't, haven't he hasn't featured in the call a whole lot. Only four or five possessions, but that was a good one. He's a good finisher. Kicked it across the body with his left foot. And I'd say at the moment, Southern Districts have probably done a little bit better on ball. Than, uh, than Clarence, but Clarence have finished a bit better. A couple of times, a couple of grabs to, to uh, take control of it, but once he gets it close to goal, Gavin Cooney, he doesn't miss. Possessions at the moment, 116 Southern Districts, 102, and I think that's because they really do have to use the ball a lot because they're left behind up forward. The Ruse by two goals, just over 26 minutes. Play being held, but play on was the call. Satori takes the kick into no man's land. McGregor used his body well, should get support from Burberry, has time to steady, really didn't steady then, blazed away I thought Andy, no talking to him, no one backing up and well, telling that, him you're clear Jock. That's the obvious thing to run to, either that or Jock just, just didn't have the awareness <laughs> or didn't want to listen, uh, but yeah, but you're dead right, he had a lot of time, yeah. he really did have a lot of time, he couldn't straighten up and he'd, you'd back him to kick him from there most times. Well Burberry had done a good job in providing the block and he would have been talking to him, but unfortunately he used his body very well again. Uh, yep. Jock to get, uh, get, yeah. get Cole under the ball. Did all the hard work again. Didn't quite finish. McConnell. The ball getting very slippery now as the rain continues to fall. 
And judging the ball well was Brereton. Goes by hand. Hurry kick was taken. Maybe effective. No, it comes to Stevenson onto that trusty left foot. And the pass is a beauty because David Giles had gone away from hold. Great vision, wasn't it? Got the head up. Saw Giles. He's going to go short. Oh, the kick is not good. He was looking for Stevenson. He comes onto the ball, Shane Stevenson. Snaps towards goal. And behind McGregor, a great mark. Well, superb judgment then. He was behind, but did it well. Now <laughs> trying to get 50. And the umpire, here we are again, Lovely. Andy. It's just delightful. Yep. One of the great Scusmario games, one of the great games. He's, uh, he's uh, pulled off a lot of those over the years, Jock McGregor. Had to run round. Tries to screw it round with a banana kick. Successful only to the extent that he got a score, but a minor one, a behind. And as we approach half time, without any doubt, a goal for us cats would have been very welcome indeed. Cole just thumps it long. McConnell's at the back. Good mark. No, slipped through his fingers in the end. Brereton's there, gets it moving the ruse way. Satori only tapped it to Alexander. Wants some space. Could work from Stevenson. Couldn't quite mow him down. McCallum with time. Cullen against Cannon. Cullen. He's clever. He's just about off then too. He's thinking about running around on the left. They just have that, that many more options up forward at the moment, Clarence. That's the big factor. I think everywhere else the game's pretty much even. And they've got more on offer up in their forward line. Cullen's kicked one to date. Colgrave likes it. And that's the other big difference. They kick him. They kick them when they've got the opportunity. And McGregor's one possession enough. I think he's had four or five shots of goal for only one major. And uh, Stevenson's missed a couple. But down the other end, Cullen's really has, uh, Cullen and Colgrave really have made full use of their opportunities. Four goals to three this quarter, Clarence. And that, that margin, you know, you started to wonder whether it might be enough given that it's going to rain fairly heavily, you think, or fairly persistent at least for the second half. The Roos by 17 points, 10 square infringement. What a great side, Clarence. You can pressure them and they'll respond to that and come back every time. Brereton by hand to Cooney. Wants to get round the left foot, does it successfully. Clarence in numbers. No do I, but it's Clark again. Has support there. Webster. Ball was touched, so play on the umpire calls. Tory almost smothered. Graves goes by hand. Back to Webster. And the mark taken and trapped well by Holdsworth. Goes in board to Clark. Running, 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 running all the time. Troy Clark. He needs to deliver the ball well. And it is effective. There's McGregor in front once again. Oh, what's another 50 metres? Pick. Now the siren has gone. We always say about the vital goal on the siren. Well, it is. It's going to be a always, to be a but it's going to be a great effort, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. you know, you're asking yeah, it a bit. Be. Well, let go of a big torpedo punt. I think you may as well from here. That's well, nothing to lose. He's going to have to kick a good 60 metres. It's Anzac Day, the day on which we remember many heroic events. But I don't think uh, I don't think Jock can be that heroic with this kick. He gets on to the Never tour. in doubt. <laughs> oh, he gets on. Oh, the post. That's a that wonderful was, kick. And that was halfway up the post. So we nearly saw it. So at half time. Clarence in a very entertaining game lead Southern Districts by 16 points. And he's playing well, Jock. You can see that he's getting a lot of congratulations from his teammates, and he has had a very good second quarter, and unfortunately just hasn't got the value for the effort. You know, that, that was a wonderful kick. If you measured that, that's hit halfway up the post. So that's going to travel about 70 metres in the end with a heavy ball. He's out in front of Cole. He's done all the right things. Backed himself. He's after the 50 <laughs> again. Why not? He's in the action today in that, in that quarter at least, Jock. The Southern Districts, well, it's just the finishing. As we said, they've, I think, Chris, they've been pretty good everywhere. Yes. Everywhere. They just haven't been able to get the score on the ball. I think Troy Clark's gone through a power of work. He's run a marathon already. He deserves to put his feet up and let someone else do the talking at half time. Holdsworth came into the game, I thought, later, the, the further the quarter went on. They were pretty good in defence. Jeremy Higgins there, number 39, done pretty well. Um, Stevenson's had some important possessions, but again, he just hasn't kicked the goals at his minor. And Jock, who's letting everyone go first, now he's pushed in by young Kent Steele, has really has led hard, given them a target, but he just hasn't finished. You just get the feeling of the discs, they're still in it though, they're just hanging in there, and if a few things go their way, an upset could be on the cards. Oh yeah, yeah, we're talking all about, we are talking all about Southern Districts at the moment, because they're the new club and they're the ones who were in the last bit of, the, in the last bit of play, I, I imagine. But Clarence have been pretty good, and they've been good in these sorts of situations for a long time. They know 
they call it arrogance or confidence or call it what you will but they've been there before and they have enough good players if one player's not playing really well they get they're likely to have a uh, have someone else bob up you know like john cullen they were struggling down the forward line for a little while there and john cullen jumped up and kicked a couple of goals so so they, they've got a few options up in the forward line where a southern district's done and so here at bell reeve at half time it is Clarence by 16 points in their game against the new boys on the block, the Southern Districts. Well, as always, this season we have our competition. Our question last week was to name the player who has won the William Leach medal three times. The answer to that was Rex Garwood, the Norfolk footballer, state cricketer, state bowler. And the winner of our prize from the ABC shop this week is Carleen Elwood of Battery Point. Well done, Carleen. Congratulations. Now, the question for this week, who has kicked the highest number of goals in a season since the start of the statewide competition? We ask you to send your entries to the TFL football competition. And there's the address, ABC TV Sport, Box 994 Hobart 7001. We must have your entries in by this Thursday, the 30th of April. And you, like Carling, could win an ABC shop voucher. And doesn't matter where you are in the state, you can get one at Hobart from the ABC shop in Centre Point, the ABC centres in John Street, Launceston, William Street, Devonport, or the Plaza Arcade in Burnie. Well, we seem to have an unsettled side in the commentary box. Robert Shaw is out injured, so we had to use Gary Baker for our interviews. And of course, Gary, needless to say, has done an excellent job. He caught up with uh, Troy Clark, who is the coach of the new team in the competition, the Southern Districts. Well, Troy, it's, uh, you know, Good to be home here a little bit, but uh, I'm moving about as quick as I used to move on the footy field. But uh, what's it feel like not to play a game at Queenborough? Uh, we're standing on this, this hollowed turf at the moment. How is it? Yeah, well, I, mean, I, I really enjoyed playing at Queenborough last year. It is, it is a small ground, but you know, not really that much smaller than North Hobart. And, uh, you know, I certainly enjoy playing, and I think a lot of the other players do enjoy playing on it. And not being able to play here ever again. Um, you know, it's a little bit disappointing, but you know, fortunately enough, we get to play on a grand, you know, at North Hobart, which is you know the best one in, in the state. Just tell us a bit about uh, you know the last four or five months uh, getting this new club off the ground. Uh, your uncertainty as coach, it all come together pretty well for you. Yeah, it did. I mean, it was always going to be a very, uh, very tough task, and you know, up until the, the 10th of October, I think it was when the, the it was announced that uh, Southern Districts was in the TFL. 19 competition it was then um, you know it, we still didn't really know what was going on and we were all thinking hypothetically and you know hopefully we, we will get in but you know not really worried about what would happen if we weren't if we didn't still always confident about making it and now we're here and you know a couple of weeks into the season and uh, and she's all systems go well once you did get the uh, the okay for the club to go ahead uh, how dif difficult was it to uh, get the quality player and recruit the quality player that you did uh, need to put the side on the field yeah it was fairly difficult i mean we had to uh, you know, had to be careful with what we were doing and not uh, not take too many players from the from our from our own area uh, you know being the sfl clubs now the old stfl um and and also grab some from the tfl and from the mainland and you know i think we we've done pretty well in that area uh, it was difficult early on, but you know we uh, we plugged along and, and ended up getting what we were after. And you did nail a couple of big name players like Holdsworth and uh, Fry from Clarence. Yes, yeah, very very fortunate to be able to get those sort of guys. Well, Holdsworth, uh, he was early doors, wasn't he? You must have hopped onto him like in the yeah. first uh, few days that uh, the club formed. <laughs> yeah, well, both of those players, actually, uh, both Paul and Steve, lived in our district, in our in our southern districts, and that we, we looked at all the players that lived in our district and approached them first. And uh, you know, with with the hope that the league would see um, you know, see a few things go, falling our way uh, with players living in our area, and you know, if they weren't in our area, well, it would be a bit harder to recruit. But being in our area, we had a little bit going our way to be able to attract them. What about the new administration with the club now? Now you've got that pretty well uh, down pat. Now it's um, you've got uh, everything structured uh, beautifully at the moment, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean. It, it, you have to be fairly successful or fairly strong off the field to be able to perform on the field and there's no doubt that with our um, off-field people at the moment they're, they're really pushing the club in the right direction you know, in, in, all, in all areas. Now you've had, uh, we've had two games, uh, Southern Districts footy side. How do you find the, uh, the form to date, uh, Southern Districts Football Club? Uh, has it changed a lot, the uh, style of play and everything from the Sandy Bay Football Club? 
Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, we had we had to pick up our fitness, we had to pick up our skill level, and uh, we had to pick up our aggression at the ball, and, and all of those things have been done all the way. You know, our skill level's probably the only one that's sort of let us down, and it was only the goal-kicking area that let us down in the in the last couple of games that we played. And you know, if we can we can keep persevering, and you know, we realise we're only a new club, and it's, we're not going to you know win, win every game. We, we run out and play, and and, and nobody's going to do that on it. But even this competition, it's going to be that close this year that. You know, it's going to be hard to uh, to tip who, who's going to win the games each week, and you know, we, you know we've set ourselves to make the finals, and I believe we'll do enough um, to do that. And you know, although we've lost our first two, there's still 16 games to go for the season. What about the uh, the, the new ground down in the area? Um, what's <coughs> what what stage are we up to with that? Uh, yeah, it, it's gone no further at this stage than it has you know, from from the from the word go. Mainly because of the, uh, the you know the setup with the amalgamation of the councils and all that sort of thing, that nobody can make a decision because it's nobody's decision to make yet. Yeah. But uh, the, the the ground has been the club has been allocated area mm -hmm. um, for the ground to be built, which is right next door to the uh, the, the Kimber Sports Centre, which is going to be a magnificent setup for the club when it eventually does get up and going. Well, Troy, it's uh, it's come to that uh, end of the day, and and very very sad that you are leaving uh, this magnificent little ground. It's been the uh, same for some triumphant, beautiful victories for Sandy Bay, and we're leaving it for this, eh, mate? Started in football with uh, the Kingston Mini League. I played there for nine years, and after that, I uh, went on to Sandy Bay Footy Club. Just played there for five years, then went to Fitzroy in '91, uh, and finished with Haw at Hawthorne uh, last year in 1997. Uh, I'd have to say the '94 uh, elimination final against North Melbourne. Um, to play in a final in, in the AFL was pretty exciting. Unfortunately, we lost it. The, the game went into extra time. First time it had happened in, in the AFL. The rule just came in that year, unfortunately, because we did draw the game. Um, went in extra time, we lost it, but uh, it was pretty exciting just being out there. The first AFL game was very disappointing, actually. We lost the game by 131 points <laughs> against Melbourne. Um, I managed to get a bit of the ball myself, but uh, to lose by that much in your first game wasn't quite as memorable as you would like. I like watching cricket, all sports. Um, I've, uh, I've been involved in sports since I was young, so it's something I've always enjoyed. And, um, you know, I like to get away for holidays and just take it easy. Uh, the goals for this year, obviously, to make the finals. Um, it's something that, that everyone at the club is focused on. Um, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be one of the evest, evenest uh, competitions in TFL for a while. Long term is, uh, I guess, to finish off my uh, career on a, on a high note um, and eventually get into coaching and, and uh, be successful in that area. Well, back with uh, the reports from round two of TFL football. Now, I know it's not a court of law, but uh, I couldn't resist the uh, the headgear. First up, we've got the bashing bank, bank teller from uh, Southern Districts Football Club, Anthony Bailey. Now, Bale's very lucky this week, first time up. Missed a lot of footy over the years, but uh, one week and probably lucky to get away with that one. Right, from, from our match of the day last week, uh, Glenorchy's Craig Lester... He was reported for striking North Launceston legend Steen Kremerskothen. Let's have a look at that one. Can they continue it? Kremerskothen tries to get out the centre, gets a high one. Play on was the call. Krim has gone to ground. Perhaps it was the umpire off the play who saw the incident, but Krim has certainly copped one and is wearing it. Well, Glenorchy's Craig Lester did uh, manage to lift the elbow a little bit there and managed to get a two-week suspension. Now, remember, guys, we're used to getting suspended for intentional uh, contact there, but now if it's reckless or negligent, uh, beware, you'll, you'll also be up there to be suspended. Well, next up, we've got Jeremy Brereton from uh, North Hobart, who was found guilty of striking uh, Clarence's Campbell Black and received a two-week sentence for that. Now, Campbell Black, uh, he was reprimanded uh, from the tribunal boss for giving uh, uh, very ordinary evidence there. So from now on, guys, I think you better lift the standard in the evidence. Otherwise, the wrath will come down. started when I was about five down at the Howard Junior Footy Club and just progressed through there through school, high school and uh, up to Clarence through the underage and then reserves and on to the seniors. Favourite AFL teams in uh, North Melbourne. 
when I was young, I started following. They were obviously quite successful back in the in the seventies, and I jumped on that bandwagon, no doubt, and I've just followed them ever since. Undoubtedly, the highlight of my career would have to be the last four years, five years where we played in four, won four out of the last five grand finals. I'd say my most embarrassing moment in footy would have to be uh, seeing that uh, aeroplane on television, the replay of it from last year's grand final. <laughs> just carried on like a pork chop after I kicked a goal. <laughs> There's probably been a couple of people who influenced my career uh, during my junior days. Would have been a guy who coached me in high school, Peter Boxall. And then when I went to Clarence first, uh, a guy called Mick Callan. And then probably later on, Stevie Wright would be the biggest influences. I have a fairly strict routine that I stick to. I like to uh, sort of get to the ground reasonably early and get in the change rooms and get strapped first and rub down first. and. Then I sort of go through my own stretching routine before everyone else. Sometimes I'll write a few messages on my hand that might just spur me along during the day. That's about it, really. Goals for the year are obviously uh, to be successful and hopefully win a, another premiership with Clarence. And my own personal goal is probably just to try and reach 200 uh, senior games at TFL, which is not that far away. <laughs> And welcome back to Belry Oval as the rain comes down. Not hard, but fairly consistent rain. And unfortunately, it will probably have an effect on a game that so far has been excellent. At half time here at Bell Reeve, Clarence lead by 16 points. And what I mentioned has been a very entertaining game. Before we look at this game, let's take the opportunity to update other football scores around the state and in the AFL. And Hawthorne looks like they are marching on to victory against the hapless Brisbane Lions at Waverley. The other game, of course, is in the <laughs> AFL, is the Twilight game, and we'll bring you scores of that after it starts and keep you up to date. But in the NTFL, Scottsdale and Latrobe, a very tight game there. Not for East Devonport, who are going to pick up four points against South Burnie and South Launceston. As I mentioned earlier, the new boys in the competition doing very well and on their way to a win, one would think, against Wynyard. Penguin, well, they've fallen behind Smithton and Launceston, a low-scoring game, a trail Deloraine. And, fellows, I've mentioned and used the phrase several times, an entertaining game, but I really think it has been that. I've been impressed by the Cats, and I'm always impressed by Clarence. Yeah, well, it's a good contest, very fine contest. Clarence have threatened to skip away a couple of times. The, the gap now is probably as big a gap as they've had all day. Uh, but the Southern Cats have always been able to drag one back, Chris. Yeah, it just amazes me how Clarence have got ahead because I oh, look through their playlist at half-time. They haven't had really many outstanding players, mm. probably apart from Jones and Brereton's bobbed up, but everyone else has sort of made a contribution but hasn't really been outstanding. And the scoreboard indicates that the game really has been close, a margin of nine points for Clarence in, at quarter time. And as I mentioned, they've extended that to 16 points at half time and the goal kickers Chris well for the Clarence Colgrave and Cullen I think well, they've been the major contributors with Brereton and that's been important Brereton dropping up forward to, to bag two goals as well Alan who kicked uh, six the first week we saw him and three last week has been well held this week um, and for Southern Districts um, man there McGregor I think has won but it's not showing there Harrison Clark Clark's been busy um, and Stevenson's kicked one too the, the important part, we'll, we'll go to stats very quickly, kicks are dead even, marks marginally Southern District's way again, we'd have to say, not many big ones, Jock took a big one right at the end, handballs as we suspected early on have opened up a little bit, Southern District's clearly uh, in front there, freeze, that's a big one, and I think that's more to due, due to the fact that, or is due to the fact that Southern District's have been undisciplined at time, and that's something they would be looking to take out of their game in the, uh, the half-time address, I would imagine, hit outs, Rattley's got his hands on the ball more often than has Brereton, but as you said Brereton snuck up forward and kicked a couple of goals. And with the freeze, I mean, they've given away a couple of 50 metre twos, with yeah. penalties, which is not just not good. They've been bad ones, and as we said, they really have to work hard to kick their goals. They don't have uh, many key targets up in the forward line. We saw that from the, the goal yeah. kickers. There wasn't any anyone big. Jock McGregor's only kicked the one, but he has had Ooh, he's had yeah. six shots of goal. I think we all got him for one four, John, and two out four of bounds in the full. So that's seven shots of goal. Yeah. So if he gets himself on target in the second half, we may see a real uh, a real comeback from the Cats. Well, I'm going to be in trouble in one area. It's raining, and I promised Gary Baker it would stay fine. I'm sorry, Gary, but what happened at half time, mate? Eh? 
Yeah, well, thanks, John. I wish you'd bring the umbrella over, but it's not all that bad as yet, but I can just feel it's going to get worse as the second half goes. But uh, both teams, uh, gee, they, they, they both uh, know that they're in the game, which they naturally are. Southern Districts, uh, you know, Troy Clark's very happy with the way they're going still, and he just wants the boys to just keep working because he can see the improvement from the first week to the second week to the third week, and we can all see that as well in the in the Clarence rooms. Uh, Fags is a little bit disappointed with the way that uh, they started off that course but he felt that they were, were getting back into the game or, or, or driving forward a little bit more towards the end of that quarter and he's more than happy with Mark Colgrave up in the forward line he's giving them something to kick to um, the big uh, Coley at full back he's uh, very uh, happy with the way he's playing on Jock McGregor and uh, he just wants the on balls to man up on uh, on the fleet footed uh, little brigade of, um, of the Southern Districts uh, Clark and Stevenson. Gary do you think that the rain will be to the disadvantage of any particular side for the second half? I don't think it will, John. I think uh, it's going to be a bit of a slog in this second half. It's going to be greasy. It's going to uh, probably uh, pull the, the, the two teams a little bit closer together, I'd say, and uh, I just think it's going to be a bit of a fight for the second half, and I, I don't think there'll be much in it, but I still think the Clarence boys have just got the edge. Uh, it, they're finishing off there down the forward line. They're just doing it a little bit better. Thanks, Gary. Mark Colgrave on screen against Webster. Webster's done pretty well. He's done, he's done very well, Chris. Um, but, yeah, but Colgrave's bobbed up, kicked his two goals. He's done his job. Brereton wins first tap, only as far as Holdsworth. The Cats are away. Good kick from Holdsworth and good mark under the conditions. Little dish off. Finds Clark. The handball came from Graves. Clark goes wide. McGregor. Cole, the big punch. Get up, get up, get up, get up is the call. From Troy Clark to Jock McGregor then. Fell down, hit his knee. He's got a bit of a some fairly heavy bandaging, bandaging on his knee now. And they don't want to lose him with the blood rule. Inside 50 for the Cats. Routley against Brereton. O'Dwyer. Clears. Beachy's in front. Good work from Higgins. Important contest. Harris, first to it. Across the body. Mark was just spilt there. Satori comes through and got tripped. The mark was spilt by Smith. Did well to get hands to it. He's played a bit more up forward today, uh, Sean Satori. Better known as probably a running halfback flanker, comeback pocket player. Goes in short to McGregor. Did everything right. Couldn't quite drag the ball down. Cole with hands and knees. McConnon. Cooney. Allen in the back half. Kick was half smothered. Clarence with the numbers. Should clear. Smith. Cole just dabbled it forward. Clever work from Cooney to McConnon. Goes into the centre square. Route was all over Brereton like a cheap suit, but the umpire spotted a possession. <laughs> I'm done for the cheap suit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know where he dragged that one from. Routley gets the tap. Holdsworth can't get the kick. Jones, I think it is, buried there. And this is the first goal going to be important. Yep. Get that, the psychological high of Jock McGregor n nearly kicking the goal, or what could have been an enormous psychological high, didn't quite get there. If the Cats can get away to a, a, a goal early in this quarter, or the first goal, then they're, they're well within uh, reach of winning the game. Hurry kick by Miller, and it finds Campbell Black. <laughs> Brereton wants to play on. He can't do that from the mark. There's he knew, of course, but it's worthwhile trying as the long penetrating kick and a good mark under the conditions. Good hands, Scott Allen. McVillie's done pretty well on here yep. most of the day. Thought about a hand pass, eventually does, gives it to Cooney because he's on his left foot. Goes right towards the goal square. Ball comes to ground. Who's first upon it? Well, the defenders are quite happy because through the agency of Nick Probert, the Cats able to get the ball over the bound tuned to the radio eyes to the football your typical supporter on a saturday afternoon involved in the footy and what good footy it's been miller he won't get there cullen's bundled out of the way clarence playing like black pushed in the back harris being held by miller he didn't have the ball wanted to give him something to point out craig miller or to walk away from that doesn't want to, wants to go on with it. He'll give a kick away if he's not careful. In the meantime, the Mount umpire has done the right thing and thrown the ball in. Webster knocks it out. Cullen is there, tries to barge through. Schultz loses the ball. It's getting very slippery. Alexander works his way through traffic, about to be grabbed, but gets his kick in. And then was dealt with, presumably, behind play. I didn't see it. 
but there was an incident behind play. Well, I'm assuming he said he's, he was tackled after he kicked the ball, but he, he was in the act it of kicking in, it. Yep. Certainly the tackling was. when he kicked the ball. That's, I'd say that's a harsh one. The other one, we won't go back to it. The other one, I'll be really interested to know how John Cullen got rid of the ball when he was tackled before. <laughs> well, Mark Colgrave had kicked two goals so far. A low-scoring game. He's directly in front. And when Mark Colgrave is directly in front, he does not miss. So goal number three and the first one of the third quarter to Clarence. And that hurts. That really does hurt. I think um, Southern Districts had the ball up in their forward line for the first two or three minutes and looked quite likely to score a goal. And I'd have to say in the end, I think we, we don't see the free uh, that came from the kick uh, after Alexander kicked the ball. From the way I read it, I thought he was being tackled as he kicked the ball. I thought a bit of a harsh decision and a bit of a soft goal as a result. That's 22 points. Conditions a little greasy. Campbell Black looks like he's tagging Troy Clark as Brereton shapes up to do battle against Routley. A good bounce. Routley, first hands to it, only as far as Black. Kick was smothered. The Cats go forward. Big contest. Joyce was in there from behind. Davey gets rid of the ball. Clarence with the numbers. This time it ends up with Black. He goes to half forward. Cullen's there. But the back was probing. Roving is Alexander. Webbs has got to come to him. Alexander was clever. Falls to Colgrave. Should be a goal. And that's a wonderful bit of play. Isn't yep. Colin? He just has the smarts around goals. You know, it's just innate, born. He's got the goal kicking, goal creating gene in him somewhere, Colin Alexander. It's just. It's, I don't know if you can teach players that, he just knows. It was a bit of a fortunate uh, possession from Campbell Black, who was sitting off the pack a little bit, but it was a good long kick. Ran very quick to the ball then, lifted his eyes, summed it up, and a very smart kick off the ground. He might be, uh, might get a job at, uh, in, or might get a game in Paris, in France, <laughs> later on in the year when the World Cup's on. But he, that was it. That's just a bit of football magic. Well, pressure time for the Cats, as Clarence extend their lead to 28 points. Brereton will get the thump. Mackey, no it wasn't, it was Holdsworth it rebounds to Allen and a good mark by Cullen under the conditions and despite the efforts of Probert uh, John Cullen Jack to his teammates says he will go long on the lead, Colgrave oh, had the ball but no, nope. oh. and goes right over the fence He's join the spectators <laughs> Yeah. I was about to make the comment, he dropped the mark, but the ball very greasy, but Mark Colgrave has kicked four goals. Not too high to probe it, he'll take the free kick for the Cats. What an obvious free kick, Alexander doesn't want to give the ball up, standing over it. So probe it promptly gets rid of him, and the Cats must respond. And that mark will be played to Troy Clark, courageously backing back. He knew an opponent would be thundering into him didn't make one bit of difference and the kick's effective very effective because it's found cannon cole doing as he's done all day thumping the ball away comes back to clark he's got support there if he can get the ball out to cannon oh he gets bumped allen takes the kick no, he's no. going to take it off no i think he might is he reversing yeah. it he yep. will. Yep. I don't think there was a lot in it, but it's, no. uh, if it was there, certainly I think if there was a free kick uh, downfield after Colin Alexander was kicked the ball a little moment ago, there was a free kick in that one. Cannon looks for McGregor. Cooney roves it. Jones kept his eyes on the ball, trapped it nicely. Gets it going the ruse way. Only as far as Stevenson. Tied against the boundary. Good kick under pressure. Clark to Harris. Little chip was intended for his teammate, but Cooney blasts it out, Probert's in front, thumps it back from whence it came. Dermody was the flyer. Probably could have taken the mark. Probert. Routley. Just falls to ground, Cooney. He's doing some work in the back half, home. Hurried kick. They all overrun it. Higgins is back there, so to his Dermody. Probert. Kick was run down by Beachy. Comes back to Probert. Now he's got some space. Squares it up. Good looking kick for Joyce. The effort came from McConnell. Falls to Davey. 
Burby's got a couple to beat. McConnor, nice little handball, finds Schultz, gives it across to Holm. Holm, high ball, Black has to wait, grabs it, quickly off, Colgrave, one on one against Webster. Good punch from Webster, lovely little trap, that was from McVilly. Joyce is in some space, got time, sets up, Holdsworth on his own. He's got Stevenson out wide, Smith holds him up, too far out to score. McGregor's there one on one with Cole. Options come at the back, Cannon's there. Couldn't mark by Mr. Tory. Cole. The boundary line beats them all. We've got to force one in the next few minutes. That gap with the rain being the way it is now. Um, Sandy Bowett, sorry. In the uh, <laughs> southern districts. Well, no, it would just be too far. And that rain coming down quite heavily now. It's going to make the task of the southern cats even more difficult. Allen pounces on the ball, drives to the centre of the ground. Schultz couldn't trap. In fact, it ricochets off his boots. It goes about 40 metres. Jones. Beachy. Oh, and Colgrave's opponent, Webster, slipped over, so Colgrave took the mark unopposed. Wants to move it quickly. And then goes for a shot for the vacant goal, and no one is there. And that really is bad defensive football. And as Colgrave kicks his fifth goal. Yep, just a lack of concentration. I must have had it back to the wall when it, when it was kicked in. But Colgrave, as we said before the game, he really has filled a gap that Clarence has had over the last couple of years, despite winning the premiership for a couple of years. And you're right, Webster just slipped very unlucky at the wrong moment. But the big mistake here was no one back to cover goal. And you saw Nick Frober, I think he's being dragged out by his opponent, which is smart play. Uh, if if uh, Probe was caught a little bit betwixt and between, kick was good. Was, yeah, he was smart, and he's smart enough to spot the option. He didn't have to kick it long. He just had to uh, kick it straight because it was always going to go straight with the wind, uh, with the rain being as strong as it is. Stretched out to 34, Broutley against Brereton Jones. The Ruser in attack again. Alexander, clever. Colgrave's there. Probe it might bounce for McCallum. Burst onto it from three metres. It's another goal. The rules are starting to look ominous. Yeah, and uh, send, and send, get it right. Southern Districts. There's a fair a couple of pretty good players on the bench there for Clarence yeah. as well. I think our drive was down there. Kieran Wilson who's maybe hasn't recovered yet. But Alexander again kicks to the square. Colgrave has first opportunity at this. Doesn't know. McCallum runs onto it. Who's also who is actually spending time in the forward line. He started in the forward line this quarter, got on the end of it, and he enjoys a goal. He hasn't kicked a lot of them being a halfback flanker for most of his career. It seems in very little time that Clarence have extended their lead to 40 points. When well, we talk about the new boys on the block, but what about the old boys, the Roos, as Black drives them forward, and they are relentless, Clarence, a great side. And that's why they've won four premierships in the last five years. All of a sudden, the Southern Cats are finding out what it's Well, it's exactly a test of character like. and resolve. 40 yep. points down, windy, yep. wet, cold. Let's test you out. As our screen shows, the rain really coming down now. Smith, it's a hand pass, more in hope than anything else. Alexander at the bottom of the pack, bounces up with the ball, is caught, will have to be penalised, almost unfortunate in the way, because he was prepared to go in and get the ball. It's Dermody who has been dragged off Colin Alexander. Yeah, you, Just you, trying to keep warm, I think. Yeah, you feel sorry for a player. He made all the play, but unfortunately tried to barge through. Dermody takes the short pass, finds Probert. Didn't gain much territory. Probert goes by hand. Stevenson, that's told at Stevenson to Clark. Almost caught, but gets the kick in. But it's a wobbly old one. A valiant diving attempt. Looked like Cooney, almost in goalkeeper style, pushed the ball over the line. And Alan's uh, number eight on screen there. Spent most of the first half just off a half forward flank. Started in at centre bounces of playing either as a centreman or as a ruck rover this corner. Burton, big thump. Black has two to beat. Oh, nicely sidesteps and pops it over with consummate ease to Miller. He plays on, goes towards goal. Colgrave in front. Webster punches this time. Flicks the ball out of the way, but Colgrave will come back onto it. Goes onto his left foot and snaps it through. Oh, and this, oh no, it was touched. Calm down, calm down. I was going to say this has become the Mark Colgrave show. Oh, it's a little purple patch. And uh, Campbell Black's been strong at, at the ball in the first 10 or 15 minutes of this quarter. He must have picked up uh, four or five possessions in that time after having what I thought by his standards a fairly quiet first half. Still goes short. 
Stevenson. In the back pocket. Takes the outside 50. Routley may have got a little shove. The umpire didn't see that way. Jones. Colgrave again with the target. Falls to ground. Alexander, who's very, very clever. The angle's just too tight. And they're really up against it. Southern Districts at the moment, they haven't had the, the ball beyond centre out of their defensive half for the last eight or nine minutes. Clarence pushed the lead out to 43 points. Burberry. Out in front of Stevenson. Holm overruns it. Stevenson goes off the ground. Plenty of space. Slippery ball. O'Dwyer had trouble finding the handle. Dives on it again. Tries to shovel it out. That's what he's got to do as Davey takes it for the ruse. He's tackled very quickly. Holdsworth. Short pass on. And it's very, very effective. Graves into an open goal. Blazes away and squeezes it through. And to say that was a much needed goal. Well, you don't even need it's to say it it's so there, obvious. A huge understatement. But they didn't want to no, I'll, I'll throw in another one. Even the Great Wall of China was built one brick at a time, so I won't tell at the moment. And that 40 points in this sort of rain is just about as big as that. But, and, but Southern Districts have to chip away at that sort of lead. And they've done it. The good part of that was the good build-up from Paul Holzman. And you'd like that great Chinese saying, the journey of a thousand, this is the original, a thousand miles starts with one, one step. One small step, that's it. <laughs> It'd be terrific to know how many times football coaches have <laughs> used that, that over the century. Chris, that's the end of the philosophy lesson. Thanks for that. Allen tries to work his way through. Gets his foot to it. It's Miller, in fact. Clever again from Alexander. Just sold the dummy. Oh, Cullen sold the dummy to everyone. Across the body to Colgrave. Well, I was right. It is the Mark Colgrave show this quarter. Yeah, and they might have to think about, well, you feel for Webster. I really think he has done pretty well most of the right things but he has been led to the ball on the last few occasions but i don't know who, what the options are for uh, for southern districts webster is, will probably remain their best option at fullback colgrave's kicked five just clapping in the goal square number six for the hundred gamer six last week six this week and in, in conditions that aren't perfect for a full four, that's a pretty good job. It was just good work from Cullen here. Yeah. Set it up. And they have been clever, haven't they? They've got some Alexander, Cullen, Colgrave has finished off well, but Alexander and Cullen especially have been very clever up in their forward line. Kept their head, don't blast away. You know, and he's excited about that. Very excited. Good signs for Clarence. 43 points to the ruse. The Southern Cats get a goal, and immediately Clarence responds. Allen tries to bar through the centre, can't get it out. Jones, I think it was, got the kick out. Allen's about to pounce on the ball again, though, decides to go off the ground. Why not? Cullen tried to get it out. McCullum got it somehow. Probe it. Goes by hand to Holdsworth. He gets over to Stevenson. That's Todd Stevenson. He's on hands and knees, bundles the ball out. Holdsworth back in the play again, gets his kick. In better position, McConnell, but decides to punch the wave, which is the good thing for the defender to do. Neither of them want the football then. And then oh. Stevenson comes in and gives away what must be a free kick. And a very silly free kick, Shane Stevenson. And you certainly know better than that. No need for it at all. And Kieran O'Dwyer, when he disentangles himself from the embrace of Adam Dermody, will take the free kick. Uh, <laughs> Dwyer, meantime, says, I'll find Scott Allen, and does it. Clarence will concentrate on playing football. You can bet money on that. They will never give up, and that's why they're a top side. Young Craig Schultz, quite happy for the ball to go over the line. There's, looks like Craig Mackey, about to come back on for the Cats. They're going to try and do some desperate things now, Andy. And Simon, Ca Simon Cannon coming off for Craig Mackey. Joyce in ruck. Routley was intercepted by Allen. It's very slippery out there. Holdsworth. Hamble wasn't intended for Black, but he's got it. Back to half forward. Good mark. Steele. He's kept his eyes on it. And Burby cutting across. Moves it quickly. Good mark. Craig Matthews just back on. He was busy in the first quarter, then he got injured. Goes out wide, Dermody. Giles is there to lend support. 
Adam squares it up. McGregor was in front. The ball's still alive. Stevenson's there. Both of them. Shane dives over the top. And he's got to put his head down and make up for that. For that um, uh, very ordinary. You couldn't term it any other way. Very ordinary free kick he gave away a moment ago. Inside 50. The tap just went to no one. McCallum sitting offside. Nice pass to Miller. It's got Alan Short. Goes over the top. Finds McCallum. Needs to kick it. Probert puts pressure. The kick's effective. Schultz is in front. The boy from Queenstown just decides to chip it over the top. Wanted David to run onto it. Colgrave's there. Just, ooh. Ran out of space. Higgins read that very well, filled in the hole. I think Higgins now is back on Colgrove. Just on 50. Joyce is there. So too is Schultz. Gets through some traffic. Sets up Miller. It was a good handle. Young Schultz. Found his way through. Good balance. Didn't lose his head. It's a bit of feeling out there between both clubs. In Southern Districts. A bit of frustration on Southern Districts' part. I know they're very keen. Obviously, they're going to be very keen to win it. And they know now that if they don't get up here, they're going to be 3-0 three, three down. And you wouldn't uh, put uh, bad money on the, on the Southern Districts at the moment. Hurry up, given to steal. Out wide. This will play it, but certainly not for the mark. It's a free kick, an infringement. And it will go to Joyce. Goes by hand to Clark. Mark's kick, well, a good one because it's gone straight to Cullen for the ruse. Cooney calling for it in the centre of the ground. That's the target. Why not when he's standing on his own? No one within 10 metres of him. Now he goes the long penetrating kick over centre half forward. Ball running loose. Here's Colgrave. Loses possession, regains it. Snaps a flying snap, but he's under pressure when he takes the kick. And out of bounds on the full. He can't wait to get near the ball at the moment. Oh, no, he can't. He thinks every time I get near it, not a bad position to be on a day like today. Yeah, Clarence, they're a strong side, but they keep on picking up good players. The cold weather, hey? <laughs> cold weather settled in, the rain and miserable, but don't worry, Gary Baker, it's warm and dry in the box. And Satori it is to take the free kick. Gary's paying for all those sins of his younger <laughs> life. <laughs> oh, well, he'll be out there for a week. In front, Brereton, and that's a good mark under the conditions, despite the effort of Joyce. He's been good today, Brereton. Yep. It's probably as good a game as I've seen him play for Clarence. Seven marks to Brereton. And Justin Brereton. He put it up in the air for Colgrave. He's in the middle of the pack, has two to beat. That came off the pack. I think it was touch. It's immaterial anyways. Beachy's there. So steel for the Cats. Gets the quick kick in and will bounce almost into the Clarence bench sitting there. And then the Clarence... Reserves and, and they've staff. got a couple of good ones to come oh. back. David Donato sitting there in the middle. We yeah. also a bit of the forgetting man is Peter Ritchie, who cracked a, a bone in his shin, I think, pre-season, and he, you would imagine, wouldn't be too far away. And Jared Reed's out today as well. Yeah, so premiership, three player. premiership players to come back. Yeah. Burberry working hard. Black intercepts Cooney. He's got some touches this quarter. Ends up with Cullen. Drives it long. Colgrave at the back was Higgins. Conceding it behind Satori. And in the end, I think, well, we're not at the end at all yet, but one of the, th the one of the reasons why Clarence has got so convincing ahead, they have more good players with more experience. Sandy Bar oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Southern Districts, <laughs> they had to dock the pay today. Okay. Southern Districts have, a, have you know, Troy Clark is an accomplished player, Shane Stevenson is an accomplished player, Probert's an accomplished player, but they don't have a lot of experience. They have a lot of goals, but not a lot of experience. Clark brings the ball out of the fence, tight against the boundary. It's kicked a little wide in the end, just in front of the commentary box. Holm will take the free. Yeah, while well, we're watching off screen, Anthony Cole's going for a big long 200 metre dash through the middle of the field. I think as much to keep warm as anything else. No, he's going to be in the marking contest. In that direction, got his hands to it and took it. Thumps it long, Colgrave. McGregor's down there to lend support to Higgins. 
off the ground. Campbell Black has just missed. Mm. It was worth it. It was good running. I watched Cole. I watched Cole run all the way. He was standing in the goal square at the other end, and he took the mark on top of the 50-meter uh, mark at centre half forward there. And his direct opponent, as you call Jock McGregor, to his credit, to his credit, kept running and was in the contest back at fullback. So 46 points to Clarence. The two threes, Troy Clark, Campbell Black. I have trouble finding the football. Crowd have thinned out. They've gone for the shelter. They're not out in the open. Very many of them because the rain has continued to tumble. A steel kicks it clear of hand and foot, and then goes the long kick. In front was McGregor. He couldn't get it. And then Jones see the ball trundle over the boundary line. I've just added up your fines in relation to Southern District slash <laughs> Sandy Bay. It's twenty-two dollars at the moment, Andy. I think I owe. <laughs> I owe. <laughs> you can donate it to the Southern Cats. Holdsworth, the opportunity here for the Cats to go on the ball. Stevenson gets in the way. Burberry grabbed high first of all. He gets a hand pass out to Todd Stevenson. He can't control the ball, but that's no criticism because it's incredibly difficult to handle it now. As you can see, their players just trying to push the ball forward. Desperation there. McCallum is in there. Comes out to Burberry. Tries to break the tackle. Gets a hand pass out to Shane Stevenson. He's bet solidly. Cooney scooped that up somehow, but the umpire couldn't see it. Black is caught. Took a long time to get rid of it. Tried to break the tackle. Will be penalised, and Todd Stevenson will take the free kick. Cullen tried to smother. The kick isn't all that effective, but a kicking in danger decision. It will go the way of the Cats. Graves is going to take it. I didn't think he was the offended player. Well, no, he wasn't. And that's why he can't take the kick, because the umpire hasn't allowed to play on. Giles, and the column there, looks like blood from the eye, and I think will be a blood rule, and I think uh, the column will have to go off. Jones. Oh, uh, Jones, I'm sorry. I said McCullum. Yes, you're right. It's Matthew Jones. McGregor, no, <laughs> the umpire has stopped Jones playing, got to wait till the replacement is back on, in fairness to the side. He's not very happy Jones, is he? No. He's not exactly running off, no. that's why it doesn't matter. <laughs> because also, I don't, you don't only wait till Matthew Jones is off the field, but he's replaced he, with, His replacement is off, yeah. In taken yeah. position, not just yeah. over the line. He's got to be in his position, hasn't he? I didn't see the incident, Andy, but there's a lot of things happening just off the ball. I mean, Shane Stevens has been tagged very closely by Jeremy Smith and a few other players were in that vicinity. Move it on, turns off. <coughs> McGregor's got the ball just on the defensive side of centre wing. Chip pass, it's gone too long. Campbell Black will take the resulting fruit. McGregor drops back, Probert's there, ball falls to the ground, Clark, handball smothered, Clarence with the numbers, McCallum, goes in board to Beachy, slippery pill, clever work from Miller, opportunity for Allen, brings it to ground, Higgins, important touch, keeps it alive, McVilly just concedes the boundary. And off screen the drinking area, the bar, the indoor bar's filled up quite considerably. <laughs> and so is the so is the grandstand. Plenty of blue and white in there, so the southern districts have attracted a bit of support so far. Schultz couldn't take it first opportunity. Holdsworth looks for Probert. Cooney. Clarence again with the numbers, three to one. Graves looks for Mackey. Had eyes on the ball. Beachy. McCallum called for it. The kick was a little long. And Ken Steele just drifted across from half back. Steele takes his kick and it's an effective kick. Puts it out in front of Todd Stevenson. He went the hand pass. That wasn't too effective. Giles goes to ground. Takes his opponent with him. There's no way. Well, the ball comes out loose to Burberry for the catch. He seizes it. Short pass is on. That's a beauty to McGregor. And we say again, Andy, every time they deliver that ball to McGregor, he gets in front. He'll get his share of kicks. If they bomb it away, Cole will punch away. So McGregor goes the kick for goal, but offline and through for only a behind. Now I have him now 1-5, I think. 1-5 and a couple of out of bounds on the full. So he's certainly got enough of the ball. But we just haven't got a value for, for possession. And he understands that nine kicks, he would have taken half a dozen marks. But Cole, in the end, has done the job. Just over 28 minutes in the third quarter. 
Cole, who's to kick in. As always, a very effective job, Anthony Cole, at fullback, and a boom of a kick, almost to the centre of the ground. Clark, well, down the game a little bit, but he's been very good so far. Uses his skills, and unfortunately goes to ground. Still looking for someone he's tackled from behind. I'm not sure whether the tackle might be ruled too high or not. I think he would have appreciated a little bit of shepherding <laughs> yeah, off the ball. <laughs> He just stood a watch try. He had to go and get it four times. Yeah, he was looking left, right and centre for support, but it wasn't there. But he will get the free kick because the tackle indeed was too high. He can go out wide. He's got Probert. No, goes past him. Finds Joyce. Long kick. And a good mark by McGregor. I was just watching Anthony Cole then. and Almost thought he was tempted to have a second punch at the ball, but he was too wise to do that. Uh, just a bit, oh, there's a bit of a, yes, no, I won't. It could be 50 metres. And the siren sounds, so McGregor lining up. Good distance out, the ball very wet and heavy, and consequently it falls short, and the players ought to make sure that they stop it. They do, not like in the AFL where it bounced through for a goal. So at three-quarter time, Clarence, who really dominated in that quarter, lead by 45 points, and it certainly was... Clarence all that yeah. corner and yeah I think they're edging class their depth of talent their skill under a bit of pressure experience all those things just came home to roost in that quarter they had a lot of good players in Sandy Bay in the end they're still getting a bit out of Troy Clark Shane Stevenson didn't have much of a quarter they've got lots of goers but they didn't have anything to match the class of Clarence five goals to one the quarter and they were, they had lots of contributors colgrave really it, as you called early in the quarter john it was just about his uh, the, the mark colgrave show it certainly was here at bell reeve at three quarter time clarence who have taken control of the game lead by 45 points and we will check other footy scores in the afl no doubt about it hawthorne will gain four points at the expense of the brisbane line and essendon and collingwood and that game has only been underway about half an hour very close, of course, but at the moment, it's the Dons in front of Collingwood. NTFL, close one, Scott Stale, Latrobe. Latrobe getting themselves back into the game. East Devonport will get four points and a big percentage boost. Closer at Wynyard, Wynyard and South Launceston, only 15 points in that game. And as we look at the other games, well, Smithton will take home the four points, but Launceston and Deloraine, still a close struggle, but Deloraine leading by 16 points. And as we look at the scoreboard of our game here, well, it was fairly even in the first quarter and pretty much the same in the second quarter. But in the third quarter, Clarence kicked 5-6 to only 1-1 one, one by the Cats, and that really does tell the story of that third quarter. We'll talk about goal kickers. Well, it really has been the Mark Colgrave show, hasn't it, Chris Smythe? Well, he's just been wonderful up there. You know, six goals, six goals last week, six goals this week. And he's been impressive. He's finished off very well. Um, He's kept in front, he's kept his eyes on the ball, led well too, and he's had some good support from others. Carlin and Brereton have been good. On the other hand, it's just single goal kickers for the Southern Districts, and that's where they've been struggling. And statistics, Clarence have just edged in front, kicks 10 in front in there, just four in any marks, Southern Districts way, but we'll say it again, they really haven't, haven't had anyone to take a lot of marks, and that's as much an indication of the net amount of times they chip the ball around, especially in midfield. Handball, 62 to 36 again, in that quarter, especially when it was raining quite heavily. Uh, that's probably overuse of the ball, but you can understand that they need to because they don't have many tall targets beyond uh, Jock McGregor. Freeze, well, it's evened up a little bit. Clarence 20 to 16 in front then and hit outs. Still uh, Matthew Ratley's way for Southern Districts, but again, we would say Jeremy Brereton has probably been the more effective player around the field. Andy, we, we've said a lot about the Cats because they're a focal point. They're the new team in the competition, but hats off to Clarence. I mean, they really are the trenches in the competition year in, year out, and they always come up with something new. I mean, Mark Colgrove at full forward. I mean, what a pickup. Scott Allen. There's no doubt about the, the, the brains trust of Clarence. They are determined to keep well, their team. And, yeah, one of the things they've got going there, because they've been a good good side for so many years now, and they're always a chance to win it. It makes it so much easier yeah. if you're recruiting. You, know? yeah. you can say to them, come over to us and we're going to win a premiership. Well, we're going to play in a grand final. They played, what, in the last five or six grand finals and won four of them 
the five of them. Four I think. of the last five. Four yep. of the last five. Yep. So that's a pretty. That's not a bad weapon to have in your in your back pocket when you go recruiting. <laughs> it makes it easier than being down the bottom of the ladder each year. Well, out in the difficult conditions, it won't stop Gary Baker because he has been out to see what the coaches had to say. Yeah, thanks, John. Well, it's not all that bad down here when you've got a terrific umbrella lot, the one I've got. But uh, Southern Districts, uh, you know, they've got themselves into a bit of a hole at three quarter time. Uh, the coach, uh, you know, he wants them to fight the quarter out, not do silly things like they're doing. Uh, there's a bit of a uh, bit of a murmur around the chain. Stevenson has been reported uh, by the boundary umpire. That's not confirmed, but uh, a bit of a murmur on that one. Um, over there with Grant Fagan, he's uh, very happy. Campbell Black, he said, take a leaf out of his book. He's just doing a terrific job the way he's, uh, he's running players down. Never say die. He did remind them that uh, they did beat them in a pre-season game, uh, Southern Districts, and he did remind them that they were laughing and squawking that day and he doesn't want them to forget that one what he wants them to do is really nail them this quarter uh, don't give up just because they're five or six goals in front don't stop trying don't stop uh, you know hammering the goals through and uh, he wants them to have a really big win and you can't blame him for that uh, no, <laughs> zoologically that's interesting squawking cats i don't know whether i've heard of squawking cats before he's a character with his abc umbrella i was expecting him to go beep, beep. <laughs> That's all we need it from Bakes. He certainly looks the part and he loves his footy, doesn't he? And Jeremy Brown on screen, he's enjoying the freedom of being the, the single ruckman. He's, just, he's rucked there the whole day in pre previous years, as we said early on. He's had to share that with Jeremy Sh uh, Sharpen or, or look for a game where he could. But he's done pretty well in the middle of the day. Clarence to left of screen. Routley won the tap to Clark. Clarence get first possession. Beachy. Working hard was Webster. Got to get rid of it. Players appealing for the free. Going to come back to umpire Sharinga. The Southern Cats have just got to set themselves to win a quarter. They, logic entirely says they're not going to win the game from here, but if they can get up and win a quarter, then they, they walk away from, the game, away from the game with something. Inside 50, Colgrave against Joyce. Harris. Working hard with Steele. Finds Holdsworth at half back. Had no one to kick it to. Look for the boundary line and with pinpoint accuracy. Just a millimetre in front of the line. The umpire free kick off, off screen. Goes to Cooney. Didn't see the incident, Andy. No, I didn't. I think it might have been against Holdsworth. I assume that because he's on the mark, but I couldn't say that with any certainty. And Colgrave led to the space was in front, took the mark. We're lining up for number seven. That's not a bad day out in this sort of weather. He's finished well. Six marks for Colgrove. His 12th kick. Played for Hobart last year. Joyce is on the mark from 40 metres. Looks good off the boot. Just didn't quite make the distance. Clark, working hard, goes to halfback. Routley needs to sit. Went without it in the end. Follows up Brereton, dived on it. Important possession. Holds worthless courage. Scramble. Giles is there. McCallum. That's the Clarence bench. Donato. Still copying instructions from the, the coach. It really is important for the Cats that they fight this last corner out. Attempted kick, then attempted kick off the ground by Giles. Stevenson, his kick is smothered. Smith tries to get it off the ground. It's a scramble at the moment, but no criticism of the players about that. Eventually the ball comes out. Hurry kick. Players and Alexander it is. Kicks it off the ground. Player who, when he didn't have the ball, looks like Sean Satori it is. And Satori will take the kick for the Cats. He's been pretty good. He was good up in the forward line early on. He's done a little bit back in defence. They'd like to be able to settle that. I'd, I'd think the Cats would prefer to be able to settle Sean Satori back into a half-back flank where he gives them a lot of run. Probert took the pass. Kick really not all that good. Webster with the hand pass. Finds Joyce. Joyce having trouble hand passing the ball. It's wet and slippery. Campbell Black caught once, twice. The ball goes free. Holdsworth, he'll use hands for the someone there for him. It wasn't at the time. Davey. Puts her head down to go in and get after the ball. 
attempt to knock the ball out. Alexander goes in fearlessly. O'Dwyer will go by hand and does it well. Finds Beachy. Beachy gets a high floating kick, which is awkward. But one trouble hole, and particularly because he was unopposed. Now he'll go out wide, and the Roos will start their running game. Schultz couldn't trap the ball, but he's got time to pick it up and recover. Well, he was tackled. Consequently, the hand pass was wide. Burberry. So he should use the ball effectively. Goes out to Dermody. McConnell's on his hammer. Ball towards the boundary line. They both try and keep it in desperately. And eventually, it looks like we're at a hole. Hands and knees takes the ball over the line. Matty Jones on the screen. Yep. I think he had a cut above the eye, yes, above his left eye. And you would assume they'd be able to put him back on the field if they needed him. Yep. But with 40 odd points up, they don't need to. Holm, shark the tap well. Routley goes again. Probe it. Nice little handball to Burberry. Burberry inside 50. McGregor's at the back. At the front was Higgins. Dermody. Kick smothered. The Clarence defenders working hard. Graves falls. Goes again, O'Dwyer, Cooney. No one can get clean possession. Eventually, Holm can. Across the body, Brereton's in front. He just took a good mark. Oh, no, he didn't. The ball spilled. Still a word of encouragement from Troy Clark to Matty Ratley. He's got to make something out of Matty Ratley this year. Southern, well, Southern districts obviously need any players, of reasonable players of size. Alexander works hard onto it. Trade is Troy Clark. Ferocious bodies going left, right, and centre. Not quite sure if the ball's the object down there. Probe it, gets up. It's Craig Mackey, who's already been reported once this match. And Smith's done, Colin Alexander, I was just I was going to say beforehand, another good thing for Clarence to come out of that is, is Colin Alexander's good form. He's had a pretty good day, all in all, and given uh, I think he's only been back training for a few weeks, and this is his first game. Who were they? Southern Districts or Clarence supporters, Chris? Not sure. Jones is back on the field. And he shapes up to Stevenson. And and they're they're out of the game, those two. I think he's keen to make a, make a reacquaintance with Shane Stevenson now, Matthew Jones. Cooney points to the scoreboard. Routley again. Works off Brereton. And we'll have a replay. And it's Mackey, this time against Probert. And it's been boiling up all day. It's opened up in spits and spats. Scotty Wade's in there, so does Paul Bunnell. Sorry, Paul Bunnell. Scotty Wade in the distance. The two runners. And this is a sign of frustration as much and lack of experience and, and youth on Southern. Well, well. Well, Mackie looks like he's getting the kick. The number is being taken. Now, was he the offending player or was he offended against? If he's getting, yes, he's he's getting, getting saying, the why am I getting the get ball <laughs> and you've reported me, umpire? He said, I can't make much sense. Well, I know he's being reported. You assume it's the, 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 the free kick in the end is being given because after that, after that free kick, and now he has to be off the field because he's been reported twice in the game. I think that rule's still, still yep. in existence. Yep. So he will leave the field. They have no option. Jamie Harris will take the free kick. But the question posed by Craig Mackey was a good one. No, he hasn't got the free kick anymore. No, no, no. now logic provides. Now, Probert will get the free kick. And the Clarence supporters love that. It looks like certainly Mackey has been reported twice because he's off the ground. That's the rule. The kick taken by Bergen, but the whistle went. And I'd say it's 50 metres. And the Southern Cats, this is really not good for them, Andy. No. They must not get no. sucked in. They, it, they've got to play the corner out yeah, the and tip, do as right, well as they the can. The temptation is to make excuses. Yep. I say they're young, they're a new club, they're frustrated, yep. whatever, but, but it's all just part of the business. If you want to be a good side, you just don't do those sorts of things. That's right. It's a big learning curve, but they really, for the sake of their supporters, have to fight this corner out. And I mean, fight it out in football terms, not in pugilistic terms. There's nothing to be gained. And the Cats bench looking very downcast. Kimmy Axel talking to the players there. Brereton comes in. He'll have a shot at goal. He gets onto it well. I think there's another 50 yeah, minute penalty. Well, players have stopped. Or, or so something's happened. Kick down field. Well, Mark Holgrave's jumping. He wants the kick. Yeah, no, I think it no. must be a... It's going to Jones. Must be holding off the ball. Yep. We didn't see that. I wonder why the players didn't try and contest that kick that came from Brereton. I'm going to be confident enough to write this down, John. Uh, Matthew Jones, well, he's about 15 metres out. No problem at all. So Clarence, the experienced side, respond in the best possible way, Andy, to a bit of biff and 
Bam. It's the only way to do it, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yeah, and that, yeah, they've been in this, as we keep saying, they've been in this sort of position before, so they'll be welcoming this sort of attention from uh, the Southern Cats. They'll know that in the end that'll impact on the scoreboard for Clarence. Matthew Routley there. Oh, I thought he played pretty well. He's done well at the uh, throw-ins. He's done well at the ball ups. Probably hasn't won enough of the ball. He gave away the 50. That's why he's off. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they've thrown in Ruck Higgins, who started well. And Burton's been good all day. Probert's in the middle for the Cats. So two is Clark Brereton. Another free kick. This time it goes Southern District's way. Higgins will be the recipient. Little give to Giles. To half forward. Dermot is in front. Fingertips outstretched. I was trying to think about what the Southern Cats could do to reconstruct their forward line. David Giles plays pretty well as a halfback flanker. He's, he's, well, he's had an adventurous day again, an eventful day again. But he's also a pretty accomplished player up forward. I might think about at some stage playing him out of a forward pocket next to uh, McGregor. Clark, the handle from Holdsworth. Clark still battling. Over the top. Looks for Holdsworth again. Burberry, inside 50, in some space. The kick just wasn't what he wanted. And Holm takes the mark. Holm looks for Davey. He's got to wait for the ball. Cole is there to clean up. He can't. Dermody tries. No, it was McGregor tried to get it out by hand. Loose ball, seized upon and towards goal. The kick coming from Ken Steele, and he's kicked a goal for the Cats. So, Andy, it's good to see them yep. get the goal, and hopefully for their sake and their morale, some more will follow. And they've got to build on that. And he's been pretty good, Ken Steele. He's been thereabouts as a as a likely player for Southern Districts or Ladley, um, or before that, Sandy Bay. And he's been pretty effective today, caught on the right foot. Kicks pretty well with his left foot as well. Kent Steele plays normally off half-back flanks, played on the wing. But there's a bit of a consolation prize, and they've just got to string a few of those together. They kick three or four goals before the end of the day. Well, it's not going to look half a hand. It's another centre square infringement. Again, Higgins will get the free. It's a set play. He likes that ruck work. <laughs> he go to half forward. Oh, Davey was in front. Just gave it to Black. And turned to Jones. Across the body, really didn't have an opportunity to look. Giles goes out wide. The catch with the numbers, Stevenson. Should I say McVilly? He gives it to Probert. Spilled it. Time to recover. Now needs help. Needs a lot of it. Cullen. It's all wrapped up. Probert. He's been itching to do something for a little while. He'll get yeah. a, he's given away a free to Graves. He goes to McVilly. Inside 50. On his own was McGregor. Just took his eyes off it. Recovers. Heads for home. To the right. And it, again, you'd, you'd expect, expect McGregor to, to mark it. It's very difficult. The ball's very slippery and wet. But I think it, also if we analyse Southern District's performance today, some little skill errors under pressure. Probably some of them not so much under pressure have cost them dealing. Short passes on and it's effective because it finds Jones and Clarence lead by 44 points. We've been playing just on 12 minutes in this last quarter. Kick not good, it's gone straight to Probert. That's Nick Probert, who's harassed by Stuart Probert. Nick Probert. Puts the ball out wide and it's good because coming to the ball very strongly was Adam Dermody. Dermody. It's a long way, a very difficult kick. The ball now, not only quite slippery, but heavy as well. Got some advice from Ken Steele, who kicked the goal a moment ago. He said, it's really quite easy, this goal kicking the caper. <laughs> Adam, he said, just get your head over the ball, follow through nicely, and it'll be a goal. It's a long way to kick the yeah. ball in the Yeah, too far, I think. It is a long kick, though. Yeah. Very difficult, the left footer. He gets onto it well. Oh, he said, you're right, Ken Steele. Oh, there's no problem at all. It's very easy, this goal-kicking caper. And so that was a beautiful kick. That is. That's a heavy ball. And he's cleared the line by a long, long way. Left foot. I was going to call him for a deviating off the line, but he swung out to his left foot to give himself a bit of angle. Good mark in front. He has marked pretty well. He really is a real contester, Adam Dermody. You saw him swing out in his left foot. That's the classical way left footers kick. We saw, or at least we seem to notice it more when they're left footers give yourself a little bit of extra distance the biomechanics say you need to do that John and you got the result 
The Cats have kicked two for the quarter. Giles, Beachy, gets it moving forward. Kent Steele was looking for the boundary. May find it, does so. Kept in, in fact, Burberry. He makes sure it goes out. Burberry's been busy. Yeah, he's been good. He uh, didn't start the side, the uh, senior side this year. He's an ex-Mariners player, a fairly accomplished junior. And again, he's one of the ones, one of the types of players that Southern Districts need to keep in their club for a number of years until he develops into the good player that he will be. Burton brings it to ground. Miller. Colgrave was a target. Joyce at the back. So too is Satori. A few smiles from some of the players. Getting a bit friendly. I think we've had the whole <laughs> gamut of emotions today. <laughs> Outright hostility to friendliness. Cullen takes a ruck work against Higgins. Falls to Allen. Miller. The top of the square. In front was McVilly. Where he had to be. Just gives it across to Steele. Looks for distance. Not possession. McVilly's done a pretty good job. He's, uh, yeah, he's been a good pickup for, for Southern Districts. Looks like he can hold down a position... Off a half-back flank pretty well. Throw in. Goes the way of Clarence. Probert's there if he can keep the ball in. He was out. The ball was in. Gives it to McCallum. McCallum gets around one, two. He's about to be tackled. Kicks under pressure. Consequently, it's offline. Looks like Giles takes the kick. Oh, was that pushing the back? Well, the ball runs free. And Cannon get there. He gets O'Dwyer out of the contest. He needs support. He's got it in terms of Dermody. Kick one goal about 20 seconds ago. Can he get another one? No, he can't. Cole is there, and he'll be quite happy to see the ball go over the boundary line. And so Clarence lead comfortably, 38 points. Shane Stevenson not looking very good at all, Andy. No, he's not his peak of condition at the moment. No. <laughs> That's one way of describing it. He's copped a bit of punishment today. <laughs> yep. Waiting for the throw in. Cole will contest for the ruse. McGregor, his opponent. O'Dwyer tries to spin through the pack, can't do it. Cats there in numbers, player being held, but he didn't yeah. have the ball. The umpire has seen it, yes, it was right away from play. Science, no, it's not. It's Jamie Harris. The students look like he's going into the dressing rooms, and I would say we'll play no further part the rest of this game. Gary Baker's there, he might be able to find out for us what's happened. And Gary Baker wants to go in the room. Yeah. Have a shout. So 50 metre 50 meter penalty being awarded because Can Jamie Harris has the ball as much. He's really goal. interested to know the total 50 metres, though. It's well, I think we've got five in the game. In most, yep. two or three for a game is, a, is about the average. I think one or two for a game is the average. Well, Jamie Harris from point blank range makes the umpire work, but it doesn't matter because the kick was successful as he puts through his second goal for the Southern Cats. Well, it's all consolation for the Southern Cats at the moment, but as we said earlier, it's important they do finish off. If the margin was 60 or 70 points, that's, a, that's more psychologically damaging uh, than is, what, five or six goals that they really can get within at the moment. Jamie Harris, 12, 12, 14 possessions, a couple of goals. He started very, very well, and uh, he'd be hoping to finish the last 10 minutes or so of the game in similar form. He dropped off a little bit in the middle of the game, I think. Higgins will do battle against Brereton. He's rucked all day for the ruse. First hands to it, looking for Cooney. Back onto it. Moves it forward. Jones, further forward. Attacking the ball hard was Cannon. Finds Clark. In space is Burberry. He's a natural left footer with some pace. In the McGregor direction. Falls to ground. Routley, who's back on. Burberry follows it up nicely. Be good if he kicks a goal. The umpire spotted a free. I think it's in the Shepherd against Routley. But just while that's being sorted out, Gary Baker, of course, give him a clue and he's onto it like a dog on a bone. What's the injury report on Shane Stevenson, Gary? Yeah, thanks, John. Well, uh, Shane Stevenson has just been uh, taken off the ground. He looks very sick and sore. I know he's just a fair bit out himself today, but uh, he's obviously copped a couple he, uh, himself, so he's not looking well. He'll uh, take no further part in the game, and we were not far away from that little scrimmage on the fence there before, and I just want to say, Chris, that I'm glad you and I are up in the stand in the box because we'd be no good in the middle of that one. <laughs> Absolutely, mate. The Satori works his way free. Holm intercepts from halfback. Goes short. Jones. 
has played really well for the Roos. Quickly on with it. Only as far as Webster falls to Clark. Forced to kick quickly and find Smith. Smith. The Roos want to keep the ball moving, and so they should. Probe it. He's got support. Looks for someone inside. O'Dwyer. Decides he'll go long. Blasts away, looking for Colgrove. He's out there. Joyce stumps the ball away. Satori. Was it cleverly off the ground? Yes, it was, because it's gone to a teammate. McVilly. Onto his left foot. Now, they want to make the most of this. Unfortunately, the ball goes loose. Smith's there. Gives it to Brereton. He gets a hurry kick. Clark with the unkind bounce. Allen. He always looks for a teammate. Cullen tries to evade the tackle. Gets around the first one. He's caught the second time. Gets it back by hand to Allen, who takes a hurried kick. And the kick is effective, though. It finds Craig Miller. Miller steadies. Lines up the goal. But, unfortunately, a picture of utter dejection and disappointment is Craig Funky Miller as he kicks it behind. Yeah, should have scored from there. Not a lot of pressure. You'd think his skill would be up to that. Ex-Mariners player, I think I'm right there. John, a couple of years out of the program now. Three goals to one this quarter. Southern District's favour. Probert. Quick gift to Harris. High kick. Probert for Clarence, working backwards. O'Dwyer kept his eyes on it. Got the free, kept played on. McCallum. Colgrave's there. So too is Campbell Black. May have been taken out of the contest a little early. Falls free to steal. And they're really in trouble in the defensive half. Looking for the boundary more often than setting up play. Some hardy souls. Webster, Higgins at the back. Probe it. He's got better as the game's yeah, gone on. he's kept right at it. It's just the character of the man. Kick was looking for Routley, but Burton was in the gap. Gives it to Holm. He kicks it out wide. Standing still was Jones. McVilly. Jones goes again. Over the back was Graves. McVilly worked hard, deserved possession. Goes to centre wing. The contest. Cannon's there. So too is Davy. Routley. A quick kick is effective. Dermody. Nice little give. Cannon. Can he score? Long kick. Good kick. Excellent goal. Terrific finish. Terrific finish. And that's the sort of football they were playing early on. It's given the uh, Southern District supporters something to cheer about. Now they're within four and a half goals. S snare another couple. And they've come away against last year's premiers with some sort of confidence. Good handball. But see, again, ball falls short when it's wet. It's a great finish from Cannon. But... But the, the important thing's there, twice when the ball was kicked into the middle of the field, uh, Sandy Bay, oh, I've done it again. Southern District's players were in front. <laughs> were in front. The Clarence margin has been reduced to 27 points. Burberry for the Cats. It's a handball under pressure, but it doesn't go to anyone effectively. In fact, really went to Brereton. But Burberry comes back on it again, and that's good football. And once again, the Cats go forward. With a bit of luck, another goal would be... Well, they've got the opportunity here, kick off the ground. But Cole is there. Hurry kick by Cole. Sees the ball out in the vacant wing area. But Philly is there. Short pass is effective. And it finds Cannon. Have they got time to steal it? Well, uh, we've been playing almost 22 minutes. I wouldn't have thought so, but who knows? And Cannon. I think I know of reasonable confidence. I don't think they'll get there. <laughs> well, I was just trying to be a little positive. Cannon. About 45 metres out. Let's fly. The kick is certainly good distance-wise, oh, and I think oh, it's good accuracy-wise. It is. Look out for the Southern Cats. They're not purring. They're roaring, Andy. Well, and that's, this is terrific. I suppose youth and inexperience has cost them a lot early on the day, earlier in the game because of the frustration, but it's also paying dividends for the moment because they've just kept at it. Did you say, you know, as we watch again with Cannon and the mark, could they steal it? Well, as I said, we've been playing 22 and a half minutes. They trail by only 20 points, Andy. It's not impossible. Well, if Clarence lay down, they might, but I don't think Clarence are going to lay down from here. Uh, well, that... if, if they need a wake-up call, certainly those two goals in a minute to Cannon is it. Can they win it, Chris? You tip them. It'll be hard. They've kicked four goals for the quarter. Five for the quarter, in fact. Probert's in there. Brereton. <laughs> <laughs> World Championship Wrestling. That was fantastic. Holt Probert. Come over the top with a flying something or other. <laughs> Brereton gets up. Higgins falls to Jones, gets it moving the Ruse way. 
at the back with Satori. Joyce. Good pick up from Satori. It's works inside 50 for Clarence. Beachy. Good shepherd. Very good shepherd. Should score a goal. He has. He's a popular player, Clarence, I know, because of the way he goes about it. And Stuart Beach, he's an ex-student of mine, Chris. Stuart Beach, he taught him uh, sports science, so he knows a hell of a lot of sports <laughs> about sports science. So he worked at the angles when he ran through there, where to go, how to drop the ball, had all that firmly implanted in his head. But he really does attack the ball with real ferocity, ran hard, shrugged the tackle, and he'll be very excited about that. Good help from McCallum. Yep, and to answer John, John's <laughs> question now, I don't think the Cats will get back from here. No, well, I don't think so either now after that goal. And again, we say we, we, we've been drumming up the Cats, but Clarence will always respond to the challenge as McVilly kicks the ball, but he kicks it almost into the spectators, out of bounds on the full. But it is great, and, let, and, and I'm not in any way biased, but it is great that the Southern Cats have fought back, Andy. Oh, yes, they need it. They couldn't walk away from here after two losses and then get a belting. Hand pass by Cannon. Goes out to McVilly, fiddles with the ball. Whistle on play. It wasn't for a ball up. There's a free kick has been picked out. Grant Fagan, Clarence coach, down the boundary line. Alexander's with him there. Burns is there. Donato's there. But it's McVilly with the hand pass to Satori. Wants to get round the opponent in Cooney. Gets round the second one with great ease. Then takes his kick. Holds with. He can't get it. Hurried hand pass. Ball rebounds, kick off the ground by Smith and a hurry kick by a Clarence player didn't pick up. And then Miller takes the mark and a clip around the ear. Probert and Giles want to go on with it off camera, but the football goes on as Cullen takes it. And his kick is very effective It finds Allen. Scott Allen thought about trying to pop it over to a teammate in the goal square in Colgrave. He wasn't able to do it. And the Cats players quickly picked up Colgrave. Those Schultz's wandering out towards the pocket but i think alan will ignore him and have a shot for goal only one goal this week to scott allen that in the first quarter he's had 13 possessions well within kicking distance usually a reliable kick from what we've seen so far this year but that one doesn't even make the distance in fact colgrave dives upon the ball hand pass comes from probert to clark clark by foot and it's good because it finds mcvilly mcvilly Whistle on play. Graves wants to go to Harris. I think the umpire stopped play. No, that's a 50 metre metres. penalty, in fact. So, what's that, number six? I would think uh, I'll check with Rick Finlay. Number six it is. Three all. So McVilly indicates he'll go long. And he decides to go Tricking. short to try and fool everyone. Finds Satori. He gives it to Giles, who nearly dropped the bar of soap. And the kick good. It should have been a kick to Derbany. Now Stevenson can play on if advantage is played. He has played on. That's Todd Stevenson. Oh, oh and he hits the pole. Well, bad luck. Because the umpire, it, yeah, yeah. the umpire paid advantage. Derbany yeah. says, well, I could have kicked that myself, actually. You know, <laughs> judging by that last shot, a goal he would have done. <laughs> of course he would. <laughs> Probably got a fair argument. Cole has kicked out wonderfully well all day. Just thumps it long again. Probe it. But the back was McVilly. Probert nearly did enough to be claimed the mark. Clark, nice little handball. He's looking for Higgins. It's inside the Cats 50. Davey was taken high. Play on's the call. And eventually ends up with Holm. He goes tunnel ball style. Brereton lumbers after it. Against Giles. Good handball. In trouble was Jones. Giles gets an important little touch. Only as far as Smith. Handball was good to Black. Both sides still going at it. Brereton's in there again. He's worked hard all day, Brereton. Yep. Yep. He's, just been... He's just thrived on the workload they've thrown his way. Wonder who they barrack for. <laughs> 27 and a half minutes gone. Holm works his way through. Only as far as the Tory. Hamble had to be better. Webster was held when he didn't have it. No, in fact, no, it's he was just, just given as a throw. Yeah, he'd had, he controlled the ball with one hand and got rid of it with one hand. It was a bit of a hard one, but it was the correct one. The free kick taken out wide to McCallum. He runs through the centre square. It's flying with a penetrating kick. Colgrave in position to mark. He's spoiled. Oh, rebound. Scott Allen, easy as you like. Ball comes to him. Virtue on the goal line and slams it through for his second goal for the day. 
And they have. They've, they've responded in kind when the in Southern Districts got within the or got to that 20 point margin and they thought hang on we better not go to sleep for much longer and they kicked the last couple of goals looks a class player Scott Allen hasn't done a lot all day but what he does is pretty good 15 possessions couple of goals not a bad day but I think in the end Clarence will be hoping for uh, bigger possessions than that it's back out to 32 points Brereton against Higgins Cannon gets it forward McConnon was in front of Dermody. From half back, goes to centre wing. Cannon, who's a bit like Probert, he's got a few possessions as the game's worn on. Goes inside 50, beats Routley. Burberry was there, so too was Cole, needs help. Might fall to Dermody, he was tackled, he got a kick to it, dribbles, dribbles, and Probert just had enough pace to get back there. Sort of, um, Dermody might have been unlucky not to have a free in there. I don't think he really had control of the ball when he was tackled. Cole just heads long again. Black, McConnon, punch back down. Stevenson, Harris, nice little handball to Probert. Good looking kick on the siren. Nick Probert caps off a good day's work with his first goal. The Southern Districts finished with 14. But unfortunately, Clarence have got 18. They kicked six goals in the last quarter, Andy. Six to three in the last quarter. So give them something to take away from the game. It was important they did that. But I do think in the end, Clarence, when they needed to win the game, when it was really on the line, especially in that third quarter, when it was there, uh, there to be won, things were reasonably close at half time, especially. It could have been a bit closer if McGregor hit the post with that wonderful long torpedo punt, hit, the, hit it halfway up the post. It would have travelled uh, 70 metres or so. So things are on the line at half time. But Clarence responded as they have done for a number of years now. They are a very good side with a good even balance of talent. They're not probably as talented as they were midfield, but now they've picked up Colgrove, who's on screen, Stuart Beach just next to him, but especially Colgrove, who's ended the day with seven, am I right, or six? I think six for the day. And uh, he's filled a hole that Clarence probably haven't had filled for a couple of years now. Anthony McConnell slipped back in the end there. D uh, David Donato in the back, you see there, he's cut his finger badly i would say given that. given that apparatus now he's had an operation to reattach the tendon on his finger there he's uh three or four games away from coming back so they've got a couple of good sides players to add in on screen there of the players on screen there i thought jones is very good scotty allen number eight plays with a lot of class number 26 smith there did the job on shane stevenson and i quite literally did the job on shane stevenson and the quarter and quarter, quarter by quarter information shows us it was relatively easy but in the end clarence by 25 points they got away in the first quarter, and really it was in the third quarter, Andy, that they, they dominated the game. But full credit to the Southern Districts because they did come back, and as I said, that final margin in the end to Clarence, 25 points. Yeah, it looked like... Uh, sorry. Sorry, Andy, I, just to cut you off, because Gary Baker, out in the rain, has an interview, I presume it's with the winning coach, Grant Fagan. Let's go down to Gary. Yeah, well, it's not the winning coach, it's uh, the winning full forward here, gentlemen. We've got Mark Colgrove. Now, Coley, terrific today, mate. Uh, must be a big difference to play. Uh, with a side like this to uh, what you've been used to the last year or so? Well, that's right, Bakes. You've just got to look around, mate. You know, there's a bit of spirit about this club, you know, and the boys just love it. It's fantastic. And uh, your own form, mate. You've, uh, Clarence have uh, been winning flags the last couple of years without a recognised full forward. It's a double bonus for them and for you to slot in, and uh, you're really kicking a few goals at the moment. Yeah, I don't see myself as a full forward, though, Bakes. I'm sort of a, just part of a forward unit, you see, and uh, that's the way the club sort of works. It's, it's team stuff and team things, and uh, as long as we keep doing that, I think we'll be fine, you know. And the way the ball comes comes down there, mate, it must uh, must be pretty easy to lead knowing that you're going to get the ball uh, out in front. Yeah, she makes a big difference. It's great to have good players around you. And a big difference uh, to you this year, mate, just to wind up that hairstyle uh, last year or the last few years. have had the long ponytail and all this. Now, uh, you've uh, you've done really well at cricket, won the medal at, uh, with the short hair and also kicking a lot of goals. So Samson's theory is out the door, mate. <laughs> just had to take after the master bucks. <laughs> <laughs> well done, mate, and all the best for the rest of the year. Thanks very much. Thanks. Thanks. Well, Gary Baker out there in the cold and the wet. As I mentioned, though, Clarence, a good win by 25 points. Well, very quickly, fellows, Southern Districts, let's have a quick look at them, their performance today. 
Well, terrific in parts and disappointing in parts. The terrific part about it was when they played good football and they really run the football. They looked very good. They certainly matched it. I was really impressed with the way they bounced back, Chris, in the first yep. quarter after Clarence kicked the first two. But the downside is I think they're disciplined. They gave away some very ordinary things, ordinary free kicks, a couple of 50 metres, a couple of yeah. uh, just ordinary attacks on the ball there. And that uh, they track, detracted from their performance, yep. but they did bounce back a bit. Yeah, they're a bit untidy in patches. And the other good thing, I think, is they kicked 14 odd goals and they really had one from McGregor and none from Routley, which is a good sign yep. for them because they haven't had many goal kicks in the past. OK, talking about goal kickers, that's a perfect cue. Chris Smythe? Well, Cole Gray, we had it, uh, Gary Baker had a chat to him. He was wonderful, I thought. George tightened up on him in the last quarter and a half. Allen is clever. Brereton was good and kicked two important goals in the, sec in the second or third quarter. Cullen's always a classy player. Harris and Cannon. Cannon was wonderful in the last quarter. Two long goals. And Mackie Clark and Probert all chipped in for the Southern Districts. And statistically, Andy? Well, it's gone. I think these will, in the end, be Southern District's way, but the big important one is the one on the scoreboard, so it matters now. I've done a quick sum there, and that tells me 223, I think, Clarence. Bit of mental arithmetic, Southern District's 253. So they've had 30 more possessions, but that doesn't matter. They lost the game. <laughs> well, Fair enough. That's putting, it, that's putting it very bluntly <laughs> indeed. Certainly they, they won the game. I'll take the opportunity at this stage to remind you of our competition. We, of course, are running our competition each Saturday in the footy. The question this week is which player has kicked the most goals in a season in statewide competition since the start of the statewide competition? If you know the answer to that question, drop us a line to TFL Football Competition, ABC TV Sport, GPO Box 9994 in Hobart. We must have your answer by this Thursday, the 30th of April. Well, not a lot of football today in terms of the TFL, but certainly the other three games will be played tomorrow.